All right, we're back. Sorting things out. Tatsuo Satsumi. Summary of previous events. Hajime Yoshimi's, uh, Yoshimi's death. Nejima's threats of mass murder. The problems just pile up, putting the detective's goal of collecting all the cursed stones in jeopardy. Satsumi leaves Aerio to handle the investigation while he catches a quick break. Tatsuo Satsumi, 9 a.m. Kinchibori Park. Sorry for the wait, boss, but I managed to gather some information. Took you long enough. Forensics has finished their investigation and the body's been carried away. That said, we're still closing the park to the public, at least for the time being. This place was really giving me the creeps last night, but it, looked pre it looks pretty normal uh, with the sun out. Did my thing go? I uh, can't turn around. He's been up all night gathering information. It must be nice to be young and have that kind of energy, but I'm glad to have him on my side. Gave me a chance to rest up. Things at the station were pretty hectic, but I managed to get some info. Let me fill you in. Thanks. The floor is yours. A total of three mysterious deaths were confirmed in the area, including the one in this park. So let's start with that one, the young man we found here. Shogo. He's been identified as Shogo Okie, 25 years old, a regular old office worker who worked around here. He died of asphyxiation due to water in the lungs. He drowned. He drowned? In the middle of the park? That's not possible. It's got to be a curse we're dealing with here. About that, boss, isn't the park associated with one of those seven mysteries too? Uh, the Whispering Canal. That's right, the Whispering Canal. It does seem like there'd be a link between the canal and a death by drowning, don't you think? Sharp thinking, Ario. You're starting to, uh, you're starting to get the hang of this. So let's assume they're related. What's next? Before that, the body of a woman was found behind a residential complex in Kamazawa. The victim has ident been identified as Tawako Hayashi. Tawako Hayashi. 29 years old, she was an office worker who lived on her own in the area. As for the cause of death, well... Yes? The entirety of her body was crushed by some kind of strong external force. No murder weapon was discovered in the area, but considering the way she was found, we're looking for something large, flat, and heavy that could have crushed her in one fell swoop. Hang on, are you saying she was stepped on? Yeah, the foot washing mansion. Exactly. Crushing is the foot washing mansion's modus operandi. The place the body was discovered is also known to be related to the seven mysteries. Then is this, uh, then is this Namagaki's doing? Shit, I knew he'd used it. Judging by the amount of soul drugs, the victim was just a regular person, not a curse bearer. Guess we should report this to uh, Paranormal Affairs. Got it. And as for the third victim... He, went, he was identified as Kohei Jono Uchi, 32, a teacher at Kamagata High. He was found in the school's courtyard. Cause of death appears to be external trauma from a fall or a heavy blow. The impact crushed his arms and legs. Since he was found in the middle of a courtyard, he couldn't have fallen from the gymnasium or the main building. A teacher dying at school. And not just any school. Kamagata houses one of the seven mysteries. Uh... I don't remember this. It's been a couple days since I played. Uh, Taiko of Suguru? Uh, I believe it houses the Fool's Procession. The park is Taiko of Suguru. That's right. I was going to say that one. I swear. Can't rule out the possibility that this death was also the work of a curse. I see. Either way, it seems all three victims can be tied to the Seven Mysteries. There's probably a curse bearer at the center of it all, pulling the strings. But you've got a point. All these strange deaths do point in one direction. That's right, and Hajime's case wasn't all that different either. He also died of mysterious causes in a place connected to the Seven Mysteries. Problem is that the timing doesn't match up. He died before the curses were activated. Hmm. 
Could he have been hit by a different curse? One that didn't have anything to do with the Seven Mysteries? Hmm, that's a thought, but if that were the case, we'd be dealing with a powerful practitioner, one who could pull off a curse like that without using a curse stone. There aren't many people in this day and age who could do something like that. Oh really? I see. I don't know too much about that stuff. I'd be more surprised if you did. Well, looking at these deaths, it, it seems like many of the curse bearers acted last night. But we can't rule out that there were more killings from which the bodies haven't been found. Yikes, I hadn't thought of that. But there is one silver lining. Judging by my own curse stone, it seems that the curses can't be activated while the sun's out. Oh, that's great news. So basically, we're safe during the daytime? Exactly. It's also likely why Nejima gave us till dusk. Ah, he must have known the curse stones couldn't be used during the day. Either way, we got till nightfall to settle this. It's time we flushed out the other curse bearers. Aye aye, boss. Let's do this. At the moment, we only know the identity of four, cur uh, four curse bearers, you included. Yutaro Namagaki had the foot washing mansion, and Hideki Arayashi, uh, Araishi had the ever burning lantern. We've got both of their curse stones. And then there's Nejima, who claims he has the one sided reed. Yeah, that about sums it up. Uh, Whispering Canal. Yako Sakazaki. Harue Shigima. Tetsuo Satsumi. Kumachika ne Nejima. We'd better figure out who the remaining five are quick. How should we go about looking for them? There's no point in searching blindly without a lead. Let's focus on other things for now. Tracking down Nejima may lead us to the other curse bearers, too. Either way, he should be our top priority. He could do some real damage if we don't get him. I also want to look a little more into Yoshimi. I've got a feeling there's some connection there. Aye, aye, boss. Sounds like we've got our work out cut out for us. I asked around Sumita's uh, Community Safety Bureau, where Yoshimi was stationed. It seems like he was investigating the apparent suicide of a girl named Michio Shiraishi. Ah, yeah, I heard about that. He was, trying to tr uh, he was trying to determine whether it really was a suicide, looking into the height of the building, the force of the impact, her wounds, all that. He must have suspected some kind of foul play, because he ordered a full investigation. But it had already been deemed a suicide, and his superiors told him not to go stirring things up. Huh. What was the evidence? Well, according to the report I found on his desk last night, the body was found at the foot of a building, a ways away from the road. There is no evidence of vehic vehicular collision, so it was ruled a suicide, but but he thought there was more to it. Yes, a truck or other flat-faced vehicle traveling at high speeds could have inflicted similar damage. In other words, sometimes a traffic accident can look an awful lot like a fall. So there's a chance that it wasn't a suicide. But what a terrible way to go. There were no brake marks on the road, meaning it would have been a hit and run. The vehicle would have hit her without slowing down at all. This is turning into quite the grisly case. But the vehicle couldn't have come out from a collision like that unscathed. Exactly, so I asked the traffic bureau to keep an eye out for any vehicles with frontal damage. But I haven't heard back from them yet. I don't think they're looking very hard. So we've got no proof. That said, if I was a traffic accident rather than a suicide, it's possible that someone silenced Yoshimi because he was on the verge of discovering the truth. That's true. You think the driver is the one who did, a, uh, did him in? Not quite. Yoshimi had already talked to the forensics and traffic bureau, right? His death wouldn't have uh, his death wouldn't have covered things up. You're right on that. Even if the suicide was a cover up for a hit and run, it doesn't seem like enough reason to kill a cop. Hmm. Oh, that's right. Unrelated, but I got something else too. I managed to get a hold of Michio Shiraishi's address. Uh, Yoshimi went there a bunch over the course of his investigation. Might be a good idea for us to drop by too. Good thinking. Hopefully that'll give us some more leads. All right, let's move on to the next topic. Remember the girl y uh, Yoshimi met with the day he died? One Hitomi Okuda? Community safety didn't have any contact information for her on hand. Not even an address? Well, they had her parents' information, but when I called, they said they hadn't heard from her in a month. Lots of family issues from the sound of it. They even said they didn't want anything to do with her anymore. That said, she still goes to school uh, once in a while, so we might be able to find her there. 
Not sure we really have the time for a stakeout right now, but she could be a key witness. Can't we have community safety track her down for us? We can ask, but it might be tricky to get, to get it done today. For starters, come and got a high school is closed today. Ah, because of the teacher that died. That's right. All right. But if it's not something we can do today, we may have to forget about it. Let's move on then. I got some information about Yoshimi's fiance from the community safety. Her name is Mayo Chozawa, a 27 years old. She works as a beautician in the area. Look, I even managed to get a picture of her. She sure is a beauty. But. Oh boy, here it comes. But what? Community safety hasn't been able to contact her since Yoshimi died. Not by phone or at her house. In other words, no response. Dead silence. There it is. Can't things just be easy for once? Mayu Chozawa. Sus. It's definitely starting to look suspect. Crime of passion, perhaps? Hmm. It is fairly common to, for people to be killed by a lover or spouse. But Yoshimi was well-liked, and they'd been together for over ten years. You never know. Things could be different behind closed doors. I guess so. But we'll have to consider the opposite scenario, too. It could be that the same person who is out for Yoshimi is after his fiancée as well. She could be in danger. You're right. Either way, she's important to the case. HQ already has people looking for her. We'll know as soon as she's found. HQ has mobilized a search unit for Nejima. But so far we haven't received any word. Guessing it wasn't at home or at work? About that, apparently he vacated his last known address a week ago. You serious? So we have no idea where he lives. It gets worse. I checked in with the factory he was working at. They told me he was only there for a month before he quit. Hold on a second, you're telling me nobody caught that? Well, I had the same thought, so I spoke to his probation officer. Turns out he'd been doing house visits and interviews, but never bothered checking in on his workplace. He also said he'd lost track of Nejima when he moved to a new place. Jeez, that's just sloppy. I've heard that they're giving parole to just about anyone these days because they're running out of room in the prisons. Which also means there aren't enough probation officers to go around. Dude's probably overworked. So Nejima got to fuck about un unsupervised? God damn it. That asshole is annoyingly good at faking remorse, or insanity, whatever the situation calls for. Back when I arrested him all those years ago, just talking to him left a bad taste in my mouth. He's probably hiding under a false name, which will make it hard to track him down. That'd explain why he so brazenly made contact. That asshole, he's mocking us. Well, for now, the paperwork to circulate his name and mugshot is being filed. That's going to take way too long. We only have until dusk. Speaking of Nejima... Yeah? Did you manage to reach your daughter? It'd be best to put her into protective custody as soon as possible. Not yet. I can't reach her. They called, but she's not picking up. Wasn't home when they went to the house, either. That's not good. Does that mean she never came home? And why weren't you the one trying to reach her? Shut up. I don't have her contact info, alright? Damn. She really doesn't trust you, huh? Either way, I told her mother that it was an emergency and that we'd send an officer to find her and get her to safety. She was real, real reluctant, but I got her to agree. I guess that explains why you got divorced. But if you, her former father, can't find her, how the hell did Nejima do it? Former, eh? That cuts deep. Yikes, sorry. Just kind of slipped out. Anyway, I suspect it has something to do with his curse echo. Back on topic already, huh? He said his curse could kill a lot of people in a short time. It may even allow him to act from a distance. I see. The one-sided reed. What was that story about again? Something about a man stalking a woman who goes insane and chops her up. Ah, right. One of the more gruesome of the seven mysteries. As for Nejima's whereabouts, all we can do is throw more people at it till we find something. I'll check in with HQ frequently to see if they've got any updates. And that's about it. Shall we continue our investigation? We could go to Kamigata High School to look for Hitomi Okuda, or to uh, Michio Shuriishi's house to find out more about her. Uh, let's go to... Okay. Fancy Sushi. 
With dusk fast approaching, they have no time to waste. With that in mind, Satsumi and Ario direct their investigation towards Kamigata High School and the Shira Ishii restaurants. That's where I was gonna go. Tetsuo Satsumi, 9 a.m., near the Shira Ishii household. Seems like Michio's house. It seems like Michio's house is at the end of this road. We don't want to intimidate them, so maybe I should go alone. The houses are really crammed together in these narrow alleyways. Strangers like us walking through definitely stand out. It really feels like old Tokyo. It's quiet. This place is normally pretty lively, full of people coming and going. But it seems like everyone's decided to stay inside because of the recent incidents. Ario is checking the Shiri Ishii household at the end of the road. The street's real narrow, so two big guys like us would stick out like a pair of sore thumbs. So, the Shiri Ishii household. There's a chance that Michio didn't actually kill herself. It might be for the best that we didn't find her parents. Alright, I'll go check the house. What am I supposed to do here? Ariel is off checking the Shiri Ishii household. I'll just wait till he gets back. Oh, you're back. No luck, boss. No one home? Doesn't look like it. I knocked for a while, but nobody came to the door. I glanced in the windows, but there was no sign of activity inside either. And I saw about three newspapers stuffed into their mailbox. Ariel looks kind of disappointed. Looks like no one's home right now. Let's try again later. Alright, is that all that we can do here? Fine, let's go to the school then. Here we are, Kamigata High. Classes are suspended for the day, so the students are just kind of wandering around aimlessly. Huh? That's... Boss, what is it? You want to talk to those girls? Yeah, I do. This is divine intervention. We were brought here for a reason. Come on, Ario. Huh? What? Hey, aren't you? You must be that high schooler skirting the child labor laws who I've heard so much about. Uh, say that again? Sorry about that. He's with me. Mr. Satsumi, if that's how you feel, maybe you should look into improving my working conditions. I'd prefer not to work for free, to be honest. Don't you worry about that. If you want to help us out, you can have whatever you want. Boss's treat. Wait. Really? Thank you so much. I've always wanted to go to a fancy sushi place. Ooh, yeah, like one of those places in Ginza? I've never been. Let's go. We got ourselves a deal, right, boss? The girls are at our service. Hold on now, what just happened? I never said I'd... Sushi? Looking forward to it, boss? Wait, since when, when were you included? <laughs> you guys are funny. You should do stand-up. It's usually easier to let Ario do the talking when it comes to young people, but we only have a day. It'll be quicker if I take the reins on this time. Uh, but he did manage to win them over with the promise of food. Let's see how this plays out. Mio... Mio... Mio Kurosuzu. Uh, she's like the disciple of Paranormal Fa uh, Affairs Chief. I've heard that she helps out with investigations free of charge under the guise of training. Although she's my old boss's protege, she helped me out plenty while I was in Paranormal Affairs. She may look meek, but she got strong spirit sense, sharp instincts, and courage. Plus, quite the brain to back it all up. That said, I can't help but think there's some kind of darkness falling around. So, this is Yako Sakazaki. She was with Mio. Could she be a friend? Did Mio finally make a friend? If she did, it would do this old man's heart good. 
but I better not say that out loud. I don't want to make her look bad. So, how much have you been able to figure out? Well, I know what happened around midnight last night. Someone invoked the Feast of Shadows, which boosts the power of curses, then brought forth the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. That allows even those who do not have the power of, uh, to cast curses to gather soul drugs for the Rite of Resurrection. At least, that's my hypothesis. It sounds about right so far. As I'm sure you know, there are actually nine mysteries, not seven. When the Feast of Shadows was cast, the curse stones appeared before those who wanted the right at the locales of the seven mysteries. We've managed to gather three curse stones so far, including the one I got first, the Evergreen Beach. You got three already? Wow! We have the curse stone of the Fool's Procession. Well, Yako, the girl standing behind me, does. That's me, Yako, the girl standing behind me, oh. She does? Is she all right? We could take it off your hands. Well, the Feast of Shadows has no effect during the day, and there's still something I want to find out. All right, I'll leave the Fool's Procession with you two, then. She's certainly well versed in the paranormal. I just can't get over the. Uh, I just can't get over the darkness. Okay, check mark. Check mark. Forensics is still investigating the area. I didn't really want to bring those kids to a place like this, but there were too many onlookers outside for us to speak comfortably. Besides, it would be good to have Mio look around the scene too. Thank you. Please keep collecting the other curse stones. I'll be looking for a way to stop the Feast of Shadows. Okay, got it. That should make things uh, go more smoothly. What about the other curse bearers? Have you run into any of them? Well, last night at school. You were here last night? Er, yes, you see. Huh. You two are using a spirit board? That's so cool. So that's when you ran into the curse echo. I'm glad you survived the encounter. Somehow, we managed to get away without accidentally setting it off. The curse echo we saw took the shape of a woman missing an arm and a leg. What? A woman missing an arm and a leg? That's... the one-sided reed. This is bad. Huh. What's so bad about that one? You idiot! Think! The curse bearer of the one-sided reed is Fumichika Nejima. Fumichika Nejima. He admitted himself. That's his curse. Oh, that's right. Wait, but if that's the case... Nejima might have been here last night. What? I mean, it's possible he was lying to us, but... What? Um, who's Nejima? No clue. So, Nejima is trying to take advantage of the Feast of Shadows for his own nefarious purposes. Huh? He says he's going to massacre the city at sundown today? And he's trying to get your daughter, too? That's why we've been trying to find him, but to no avail. Honestly, this information has been the most useful we've gotten so far. So, just to be sure, could you tell me who else was at the school last night? Well, as far as we know, there was us, Mr. Jono Uchi, and one of our classmates, Hitomi. Don't forget old man Ash Ashi Ashimaya. Wait, Hitomi? Do you mean Hitomi Okuda, a second year student? Um, well, yes. Why? Boss. So, she was here last night. I saw Hitomi earlier, though. Or, er, I saw Hitomi earlier, though, and she didn't seem like a curse bearer to me. You did? Did you talk to her? Uh, yeah? Would you mind if we asked a few questions about that? Hitomi said she didn't want to talk to the police because she was afraid she'd become a suspect. So I can't tell you anything unless you swear you won't drag her into this. Ah, I see. Don't worry, this is about a different matter. A different matter? You mean about the police officer, Mr. Yoshimi? You know about that? Did Hitomi say something about him? Yes, she did, actually. If we're talking about people who were at the school last night, there is one more person, though I'm not too clear on the details. There is someone else? Apparently, H Hitomi saw Mr. Jono Uchi getting cursed and killed last night. What? Talk about some vital information. What she said happened was... Michio was the one who killed Mr. Jono Uchi? Are you sure it was really Michio that she saw? Well, that's what she told me. I wasn't there. That must mean there was another curse bearer here last night. Jono Uchi was killed by a curse, so someone had to have been there, whether it was Michio or not. Damn, boss, do you think it really could have been Michio's ghost? I mean, based on what we've heard, she does have plenty of reason to be vengeful. Calm down. Just because the paranormal exists doesn't mean just anything is possible. It's still possible that Nejima was behind Jono Uchi's death. But what about Hitomi's story? Hitomi's story. 
About this janitor, Ashimaya, was it? How old is he? Do you know how long he's worked here? Huh? Why are you so interested in him all of a sudden? I only just transferred to the school, though, so I have no idea. He's around 50 years old. He came to our school about half a year ago. No one knows what he did before, so there are all kinds of rumors about him. I see. Thanks. I'm starting to get a better picture of all this. Huh? Listen up. It's not uncommon for former prisoners to find work under an alias after their release. The notoriety attached to their former name can get in the way of proper rehabilitation, you see. What are you? No way! Ario, have you have the officers apprehended uh Ario, have the officers apprehend the janitor. He worked the night shift, so he might still be in the overnight room. Uh yes, right away. Boss, bad news. Apparently the room's been empty all morning. Sounds like they'd look, been looking to question Ashmaya too, but couldn't find him anywhere. No. That all but confirms it. Just one more thing to check. Are there any photos of this Ashmaya? Hmm. The old man seriously hated getting his picture taken. He'd always avoid it. Ario, call an urgent search for Makoto Ashmaya. We can't let him get away. Yes, sir. I'll contact. I'll contact HQ right away. How many of these are there? Oh my, I didn't expect this at all. Yeah, how could that old man have been some horrible criminal mastermind? I can't believe it. And a curse bearer on top of that. To think he was so close to us this whole time. It gives, us, it gives me chills. A guy like that really shouldn't have been allowed to work at a high school. Let's hope it isn't already too late. Oh, I, uh, I may have shown Ashmaya my curse stone last night. What? I don't like this one bit. Nijima did say he wasn't specifically targeting, targeting curse bearers, but I'm glad nothing happened to you. Wait, but then could it have been old man Ashmaya who attacked you in the hallway? Ah, I almost told him that you were still in the building too. What? You did? Yikes, good thing I didn't say anything. You might have gotten very lucky there, kid. You might have gotten very lucky there, kid. Uh, this is too much. I hope they find him soon. Come on, long arm, long arm of the law, help us. To put a stop to the Feast of Shadows, it would help if I knew more about who the, uh, how the curses of these seven mysteries first came about. Hmm, in that case, you're probably best off talking to that crabby researcher guy. You mean Mr. Araishi? Mr. Araishi? I would very much like to talk to him. Ah, right, he's a teacher here too, isn't he? You would know him already. He might be more inclined to talk if it's one of his students doing the asking. Do you know where he is? I do. We tried to talk to him, but he refused to cooperate. But you two should give it a try. He's at his usual, usual cafe working on his papers. The cafe? Oh, Kuro Kikyo Cafe in Kamizawa. Thanks. We'll head over there now. Um, school rules say we're not allowed to go to cafes, though. Don't worry about it. I'll allow it. Thank you. Huh? That's all it takes? There must be a mastermind behind everything. Someone who orchestrated all of this for a reason. I want to find out why. Hitomi did say that Mr. Yoshimi entrusted her with something. He did? What was it? Yoshimi gave her a talisman? Yes, apparently he also asked her to look for another one just like it. One that Michio had. What kind of talismans could they be, boss? Doesn't ring a bell. But if Yoshimi was talking about him with his dying breath, they must have been pretty important. Did they find a talisman on Michio where her body was found? I'll check, but if they did, Yoshimi would have had plenty of time to retrieve it before he died. Right. Would you consider giving us Hitomi's contact information? I'd like to talk to her about this talisman. I'm not sure. She never opened up to anyone except Mr. Yoshimi. I'm no good, huh? I was friends with Yoshimi, though. You don't seem like too bad of a guy. Not all that scary for a cop. But I doubt that'll be enough for her. She really doesn't want to end up becoming a suspect. To be honest, she was even a bit wary of us. Hmm. Well then. Do you think she talked to Yoshimi's fiance? Haven't they met before? Oh, they have. She told us about that. Yes, she might be willing to talk to her. All right, then. We better find her fast. You haven't been able to reach her? That's a little worrying. Mayu Chizawa. Mayu Chozo. 
Ah. Uh, Mayu Chozawa. We'll let you know as soon as we manage to contact her. Okay, I'd be willing to give Hitomi's contact information to her. Oh, right, one more thing. Hitomi told me that Mr. Yoshimi gave your instructions in the event that something happened to him. He told her to give the talisman to Mr. Nakagoshi from the police headquarters. What? So it was a Nakagoshi case? Hmm, why would Yoshimi tell her that? Could you check on that? I will, but, well, I don't know if they'll pick up when I call. Is he with the Paranormal Affairs Bureau? Well, yes, Nakagoshi's the chief, but he's almost never in, so I don't really know the guy. To be honest, I'm not even sure he, if he exists or if he's just a figurehead. I've never spoken to him myself. All of Paranormal Affairs cases are referred to as Nakagoshi cases. Jeez, what's up with that? That amulet Hitomi was looking for may be the missing puzzle piece to this mystery. Alright, we're good. Um, what was that thing you mentioned about Michio earlier? Something about a grudge? Did you know anything about her? Uh, what's your relation? I'm her, f I'm her friend. I was actually planning to resurrect her at first. Ah, I see. We gained quite a lot of information from you two. It's only fair we share as well. Tell her, Ariel. Alright. Keep in mind that this is just a theory, though. Okay. After re-examining the crime scene, Yoshimi concluded that Michio's death wasn't a suicide, but a ve vehicular collision. Wait, what? An accident? Being hit by a speeding truck or a van would have resulted in similar injuries. The investigation was ordered by Yoshimi, so it seems he had his doubts about it being a suicide. What? A van? Speeding? Yaku, what's wrong? Are you okay? Ah! A van. There's a young man in the driver's seat. In the passenger seat, a woman. Yako! Ah. Yes? Wait, was I? Are you back now? How do you feel? You're covered in sweat. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm okay, I think. Sorry, I went a little crazy there. It's no problem, as long as you're okay. That was quite the surprise, though. Um, Yoshimi talked to you about Michio, didn't he? Well, he didn't give me any specifics, if you're wondering about that. So I don't know what's truly on Michio's mind either. Right. Do you have any idea why Jono Uchi was so scared of Michio? Well, about that. I'm not sure exactly how to put this, but... I see. Well, I have expected it was something like that. Thank you for telling me. Sorry, it's hard to explain. I wonder how he, uh, I wonder what he got his hands on to be able to blackmail her like that. Michio, what happened? Is that everything? Uh, there appears to be a person standing in the doorway here, but I guess that nobody else can see him. Oh, it's one of the police officers, isn't it? Isn't it? This is one hell of a coincidence, huh? That this random girl you know is already involved with the case? Is that everything? What's that rope all about? It indicates where Juno, Jono Uchi's body was found. They've moved his body, but this way we still have an idea of how, he's, how it was found. Yikes, that's a little gross. You can even see how his arms and legs are all... Ugh. Cool it, Ario. You're scaring her. This kind of stuff is a little much for a kid. Hey, I'm pretty sure she only asked because you were starting it, uh, staring at it so intently. Alright, that's enough. Mio, what do you think? I knew it the second I looked at the scene. You're right, traces of a curse still linger here. I figured as much. Does that mean Jono Uchi was killed by one of the curses of the Seven Mysteries? Yes, a strong curse like he, that always leaves behind a trace. Wow, Mio, you're so calm. Are you used to this kind of thing? Uh, I wouldn't say I'm used to it. It just comes with experience, I guess. No, I've heard some stories about you. Didn't you investigate a gruesome scene where someone had been killed by a paranormal attack without even breaking a sweat? Stop it, Mistress Tsumi. She's going to get the wrong idea. Whoa, that's amazing. Mio, you're a professional. You think? Totally. You're cool even in the face of death. That's awesome. Uh, when you put it like that, I'm not sure how awesome it is. 
Hey boss, Forens Forensics is calling. I'll go see what they have to say. Sure, thanks. Boss, they found this on the ground a short distance away from the scene. What is that? A ribbon? Yeah, the kind you use to up tie up your hair. What? I've seen that ribbon before. You have? Go on then. That's the ribbon that Michio always used to wear. What? Doesn't that mean Michio is here? Are you sure? Definitely. I have the same one at home. We bought them together. That has to be hers. Then, did she come back to life somehow? But how? Scene of the crime, surroundings. Jun. Mia. Yako. If I was Michio and I came back to life, where would I go? That's the question. She got her revenge on Jono Uchi, but she may ha have more revenge to shout. Is there anyone else she'd have a grudge against? Well, what about the guy who killed her in the collision? If she already did come back to life, then it's terribly sad that she's spending her new chance at life like this. Being obsessed with revenge is such a tragic way to live. I'm afraid that's all we can tell you. Don't worry, you were a big help. Thank you. We should start our search for Nejima and Mayu Chozawa. It might be worth it to check Michio's house as well, just in case. Let's use the school as our base of operations. If anything happens, go to one of the officers hanging around here. Got it. Thank you, and good luck. We'll go talk to Mira, uh, Mr. Araishi about the way to lift this curse. All right, boss. Let's go. Uh, let's get going whenever you're ready. Uh, now do we go to the household? Uh, I guess not. Life can be tough, Harue Shigima. Throughout the night, Richter continues to gather information about the curse stones, while Harue lies awake until dawn, preoccupied by the prospect of bringing her lost child back to life. Harue Shigima, 10 a.m. Good morning, ma'am. How are you feeling? Hmm. I'm fine. I hope we can make good progress to get it today. How's your curse stone looking? I haven't felt anything from it since sunrise. Interesting. It's possible that its powers can only be unleashed at night, then. That aside, why are you so late this morning? There are unfortunately some things that can't be investigated while the world slumbers. But I did get some research done in what limited time I had. Very well, let's talk. He's looking a bit tired. He must have been up all night investigating. This is the old mansion where I was born and raised. The town is beginning to wake up once more. The clamor of society can be heard from beyond the garden gates. Like any day, a cloud of pollution drifts out from the industrial area. I thought I saw entrance there for... Yeah, there. No one's in the mansion at the moment. The door has been locked shut. The housekeeper has already left after cleaning and preparing food. All right? By the way, there's something I wanted to talk to you about. What's that? Our current plan is to steal a curse stone that's already absorbed soul dregs, but... I'm wondering if it would suffice to not steal, but instead negotiate with the curse bearer and have them use the right for our purposes. Oh? I mean, I suppose that would accomplish the same, but do you think it's possible? So long as we offer compensation, it may prove much easier than you'd expect. Compensation? Cash, for instance. That wouldn't be off the table for a family as rich as the Shikimas, would it? Of course. Why, any amount would be fine if it'd get the job done. I won't let monetary matters lead me to regrets the way it did back with the ransom. Okay, with that option on the table, let's figure out our strategy. Do you have a curse bearer with whom we can negotiate in mind? Not yet. Surprisingly, it seems the other curse bearers haven't been uh, that proactive about collecting soul dregs. Did you see the news this morning? No, I haven't. Overnight, three mysterious deaths were reported in this area. They've yet to announce the identities of the bodies found. 
but they've been nicknamed the Honjo serial killings. It's garnered quite some attention on the streets. Oh my. Only three. That's what I thought. Even if the victims were curse bearers, just one or two wouldn't be enough soul dregs. And for what those cursed stones are capable of, a mere three victims seems a little on the low side. With this little activity all through the night, the curse bearers must be a cautious bunch. What's holding them back? Are we not all after the power of resurrection? There may still be uh, some undiscovered victims, but it doesn't seem like anyone has gathered enough soul dregs yet. We might have to set up some bait to spur them into action. And then we offer them the deal. None of the curse bearers seem very... None of the curse bearers seem very proactive. I wonder if this situation could be what the mastermind who kicked it all off intended. Now that's an interesting theory. You think there's someone behind this all? You mentioned hearing an agonized voice telling you to kill when you first obtained the curse stone. That doesn't sound like a coincidence to me. Someone agitated the curse in this area on purpose. They are likely after the rite of resurrection as well. So you're thinking this person is not one of the curse bearers? You've got a sharp mind, ma'am. Though it might seem obvious for the mastermind to become a curse bearer and collect soul drags in it if they were after the right. This would be very risky since as a curse bearer they themselves would become a target. So it'd actually be more convenient for them to, if the curse bearers moved less aggressively. That's right. But despite that, they've been inciting the curse bearers to commit murders. Why? Let's consider this. What if the mastermind isn't trying to collect soul dregs themselves? You mean their intention was also to steal the souls while the other curse bearers compete with each other from the start? Sitting back and observing from the sidelines is a safer course of action. Which is why I figured it'd be best for us to attempt the same strategy. So how should we do it? There's still reason to suspect the mastermind could be a curse bearer themselves. To be honest, I want to keep my distance from whoever it is. There's no telling what kind of power they might possess. Whether our aim is to negotiate or steal, we'll have to outpace the mastermind making contact with the other curse bearers. How do you suppose we do so? At this point, all we can do is search. Is Haraway the mastermind? Did she organize all of this to bring her son, son back? If there's a mastermind inciting the curse bearers to collect soul drags, can we be sure there is even a rite of resurrection? Good question. The rite could be nothing but a myth fabricated to spur the curse bearers into action. Seeing it might be for naught. Seeing it might be for naught, do you want to give it up, ma'am? Never. Understood. After all, we'll never know the truth unless we see it for ourselves. But we'll do it without using the curses ourselves. By the way, I met a few people who seemed like potential curse bearers last night. I did some investigating into all of them, but I only managed to get detailed information on two. You're quick. I suppose that's to be expected from an investigator extraordinaire. I appreciate the flattery. Firstly, there's Ayomi Tono, the girl we talked to before, although she, is, she isn't a curse bearer herself. She's a student attending a, a T University of Art. She currently lives alone in, the univer in an apartment near Midorichi Park. Midoricho Park. You even determined her address. You're not one to be underestimated, Mr. Investigator Extraordinaire. I called every single university with Yuki Yukio-e in the curriculum pretending to be her parent. I went around to check on her place on the way here. It doesn't seem like she returned home last night. I'm worried she might have run into some trouble. Didn't you attempt to follow her last night? I'm embarrassed to say, but I couldn't. She shook me. I couldn't keep track of her. And here I thought you were an investigator extraordinaire. I'd like to learn more about her, but it would take some time. She is planning to steal the curse stones, just like us. It's best we act carefully around her. Next is the tall man who is dressed in black. I met him near Kinshicho. He stood out with the way he dressed. I managed to get some good information from him. Impressive. What can I say? He works as a secretary uh, to Hihaku Soap's chairwoman. I believe his name is Ta Takumi Yumi Oka. Takumi Yumi Oka. The Hihaku Soap's headquarters and factories are both located, located in Honjo, correct? Yes, they've been here for a while, but it's only in the past 10 years that the company has shown significant growth. 
I remember seeing the chairwoman on the news a few years back. She seems to be very shrewd. With the increase in sales, I assumed she'd want her factories running at full capacity. But with the harsh restrictions against industrial waste, a lot of factories with older equipment had to be shut down. That's right. Even 10 years ago, there were many complaints about chemical plants dumping waste into the river. Most companies back then were more concerned with making a profit than protecting the environment. I wonder what a man working for such a company would have been up to in the middle of the night. On the way here, I stopped by the company's headquarters, but they hadn't started for the day. I should have better luck later. Let's hope you will. Perhaps they're, inter uh, perhaps they're interested in seeing if the right would be of beneficial for their product research into beauty and skincare. <laughs> now that's an interesting thought. I ran into one more suspicious young man last night. This one seemed to be out collecting soul dregs, right? Indeed, I couldn't get a good look at him though, and I couldn't gather enough intel to properly identify him. Well, that's a shame. But I can make an educated guess. Oh? You know, that researcher who discovered the ancient text on the Rite of Resurrection, the one that lives near her? His name is Hideki Araishi, and the man I met was very similar in stature. Oh my, even he is involved? How awfully suspect. Considering his background, couldn't he be the one who initiated the whole affair? I think it's possible, yes. Which is why I decided to refrain from making contact with him for the time being. Safety first. Understandable. Of course, I want to learn more, but this isn't the right time to focus on him. I'd prefer to ascertain who else is a curse bearer. First, I'll return to the Hihaku Soaps to see that man in black. Their headquarters are down on South uh, Warigesui Street. Warigesui. I learned something new about the criminal involved with the kidnapping. Concerns the serial killings. There was a body found at Kamagata High School. The person was identified as a school teacher. His name was Kohei Jono Uchi. Hmm? Do you think he was a curse bearer? Not sure. It's possible. But regardless, this means the two people who knew the truth about the kidnapping are both dead. Hmm. Just when we were getting somewhere. It isn't enough to make me give up, of course. Still, we don't know anything about Michio Shere Ishii's residence. It'd be wise to pay it a visit. Understood. In addition to three victims associated with the Honjo serial killings, there's Michio Shere Ishii who has reportedly committed suicide, and the police officer who died at the former Yasuda Gardens. If strange deaths continue occurring like so, they're bound to inspire strange rumors. But those last two have nothing to do with the seven mysteries, no? It's true, both occurred a week before the accursed situation began. Still, it cannot be ruled out. It's possible that the mastermind was involved even with those killings. How? What if there were preliminary steps to awakening the seven mysteries of the curses? Can we really assume they're unrelated just because the timing doesn't match up? Or rather, the police officer's death is so baffling that it'd be easier to, if it were connected to these curses. The victim wasn't the type to be caught off guard easily. You seem to know a lot about this. I suppose we weren't strangers. My personal feelings might be wrapped up in this one too. I see. If you were to investigate this matter more, you might get a lead on the mastermind. You're right. If we wish to focus on the mastermind's identity, this would be a fine starting point. We might even discover more deaths related to the curses on the way. We should pay attention to today's news. Well, that's all I have to report. Shall we continue with our investigation? What do you want to do? If you still can't use the curse stone, taking a walk should be a fine place to start. Right, let's go together. I want to see what's going on for myself. In that case, I'll trust you to decide on where we should go, ma'am. Where should I go to begin my search? Which places have stood out to me the most so far? Which one is this one? Come on, got a high school. Mido Richo Park. We're here. This is Mido Richo Park. Ayame Tono lives around here. She wasn't in her apartment when I dropped by this morning. I wonder if it's worth checking again. It's always heartwarming to see children playing in the park. Richter seems to like kids, perhaps because they're on the same wave wavelength. This place is connected with the story of the Taiko Suguru. 
Not only that, Katsushika Hakusai's home was also in this area. That may be that might be why Ayomi chose to live here. Small park bordering south where Wari Gasui Street, sporting a mixture of cherry and evergreen trees. Although unremarkable in most respects, its small playground always attracts a number of children come evening. While no trace remains of the modern day, it stands on what was once the site of the Sugo, Suguru estate. The legendary artist Katsushiko Hakusai is also believed to have been born in the vicinity. Is that all that's over here? It looks like that's all that's over here. We won't get much done standing around here. Why don't I go and check out Ayami's apartment? You don't mean speak with her, do you? No, I'd prefer get to get an idea of what she's been up to. I'd like to see whether she's been home or not, just to potentially get a trace on her movements. Then be my guest. Okay, I shouldn't be long. I'm back, ma'am. So, nothing? I'm afraid, sh I'm afraid so. She still hasn't returned. However, however, I noticed a few people who seem to be related to the police force keeping watch in the area. I don't know if they got two eyes on her apartment, uh, but they do appear to be watching the building it's in. Interesting. You've got a sharp eye to have noticed them despite being so covert. What can I say? It's part of the job. However, it meant I had to refrain from knocking on her door or looking through her windows. I wasn't able to check her electric, electric meter or mailbox either, unfortunately. You were planning to go that far? Uh, is that all that's here? I guess so. South Waragasui Street. The Hihako Soup's headquarters are on the other side of the South where Ware Kasui Street. They were closed when I visited this morning, but it appears things are up and running now. To think the small soap making company could grow so much in such a short time. They have factories and warehouses throughout the area now. You can see why director and now chairwoman Natsue Yamamori is called the Queen. Chemical producer that ranks fourth largest in the domestic detergent market and seventh largest in the cosmetics market. From its humble beginnings as a small soap factory established after the war in 1946, founder Natsui Yamamori utilized her feminine perspective in a well-timed economic boom to boldly lead the company into new markets. Even as the market grew crowded with the industrialization of Sumida City, the company continued to expand, digging its roots deep into the area. In particular, it established itself as a household name by focusing its branding towards the rapidly expanding convenience store market. Its flagship products now include cosmetics, detergents, soap, shampoo, and more. The company's name, Hihaku, can also refer to Kasuri, a type of patterned fabric. Natsue Yamamori. Natsue is the former president of Hihaku Soaps, a large chemical company. Though she retired from her position two years ago, she still wields great influence over the company from her position of chairwoman. Recently, there have been rumors about her possessing strange and powerful magical abilities, earning her the nickname the Witch of Hihaku. Prior to the war, Natsue enjoyed working her dream job at a textile factory. She was forced to face the bitter reality of the world, however, when the factory was destroyed by a fire during the war. She was ordered to rework the fabric she had painstakingly crafted into something more suitable for blue-collar work. Witnessing the rise in popularity of Western-style clothing in the post-war period, Natsue left the textile industry. However, a nod to her past can be seen in her company's name, with Hihaku being another name for Kasuri, a type of fabric featuring patterns and images woven with dyed fibers. Having long been dissatisfied with the soap supplied at the textile factory, Natsue saw a business opportunity and set up her own small soap factory. Taking inspiration from imported soap brands, she developed new products, which quickly gained a good reputation. Ever the shrewd businesswoman, uh, Natsue ran a, an aggressive promotional campaign on TV, featuring a popular Japanese singer rapidly turning Hyaku soaps into a household name. You mentioned that Takumi works as her secretary? That's correct. Do you think it's possible he's acting on her orders? That's exactly my thinking. Curse bearer with both money and power could certainly look at resurrection as their next prize. Negotiating with a person of that stature may prove difficult. Business is up and running. I can see people inside the reception area. He tells me he barely slept last night, and yet he seems to be brimming with energy. 
Was I too that uh, was I too that resilient at his age? Perhaps it would set apart a detective from the rest. First, I need to confirm whether Takumi is the man I ran into last night. Then I'll be able to determine if he's a curse bearer. It'll be better if I go inside the headquarters alone. You should walk around, visit a cafe for some tea, perhaps. Back in the Edo period, the canal known as South Wari Gasui ran through this area, but it's been turned into a major road. It's a bit away, fr it's a bit away from Kinshicho Station or Ryokoku Station, though it's still considered a nice area. The stories of the ever-burning lantern and the foot-washing mansion both took place around here. One of the bodies discovered this morning was found by this road as well. This is quite a lively area, huh? I suppose you could call it somewhat of a city center. A uh, Waragasui lit partitioning ditch uh, refers to literally partitioning ditch refers to a waterway dug down the middle of a road so as to fight, divide it. At the dawn of the Edo period, the Honjo district was little more than a collection of suburban rice farms. As the area became more developed, the South Waragas Warigasui was excavated in order to drain rainwater into the Yokojiken River to the east. Though it served the people long and faithfully, it was converted into an underground culvert at the beginning of the Showa era. In the present, no trace of it remains on the surface, but the street that bears its name. So an influential person at Hihaku Soaps is potentially a curse bearer. Richter proposed we use money to negotiate for the curse stones, but we could hardly outbid a large corporation if it came down to it. Here we are at Ground Zero, Komagata High School. I guess it's logical that the police's got this place shut down. Uh, the teacher's body was found here after all. It's as if the students have nowhere to go now that the school's closed. It seems the officers are still inspecting the scene. Entry has been strictly prohibited. The news has attracted a bunch of curious onlookers, huh? That works in our favor. The more people around, the better we can blend in. He appears to be wary of those police officers. Maybe the police really do have something against private investigators, just like in those detective novels. This place is said to be connected with the story of the fool's procession. I wouldn't be surprised if a curse bearer has decided to turn up. However, I need to find out if that teacher was a curse bearer or not. I expect the police to be baffled since they don't know about the curses. I can ask around and see what the students have to say. All right, I'll go ask the students about Michio. I'm back, ma'am. So, what did you learn? That school kid sure love a good rumor. I was practically drowning in stories about Mr. Jono Uchi and Michio, most of which seemed dubious at best. Not surprising. Most of what I heard was hardly worth a second thought. But there was one story that caught my attention. Oh? Some believe that Michio is the one who killed Mr. Jono Uchi. Really? The story's got two pieces of evidence to back it up. One of them wasn't news to me. Apparently, he's been mumbling that Michio is going to kill him for some days now. A fellow teacher overheard him this, his mumbling and told the students. And then it spread like wildfire, I suppose. Rumors that juicy don't, have a, don't stay a secret for long. As for the other piece of evidence, a pigtailed girl in, a, in a, her school uniform was seen around school late last night. Go on. Although numerous people claim to have seen the girl, not one of them saw her face. Some are proposing it was Michio brought back to life, or that it was her vengeful spirit. But it's not like Michio's the only high school girl to wear pigtails. This rumor might have been made up just to fan the flames. Hmm. But if it were true... I'd want to get a hold of her in order to hear her side of the kidnapping. If she's alive, that'd be ideal. There's still one more thing I should mention. I discovered where Michio lived. A student had a list of student addresses on hand. That's an amazing find. I believe all the students actually have a copy of said list. It truly worries me how easy it was to obtain what should be confidential information. Imagine what would happen if that information got into the wrong hands. Well, so far it hasn't, no? Sure, let's just hope it stays that way. 
In the meantime, it's now possible for us to visit Michio Shira Ishii's house. Near the Shira Ishii household. How did it go? I went to visit Michio Shirishi's family home. However, no one seemed to be there. I got no answer at the door, and all the lights were out. It seems to have been empty for a while now. There was a stack of newspapers out front. Hmm. I've never liked these messy and cluttered back streets. They give me the jitters every time. It's reassuring to have someone as strong and tall as Richter accompanying me. He looks so unfazed. I suppose a detective is used to this kind of thing, always investigating and chasing criminals. I wouldn't be cut out for it. It's a bit quieter over here. It is a residential area, after all. All these run-down row houses really scream working class, don't they? Social connections run deep in working class areas like this place, so I decided to talk to the locals. I met a few nice old ladies who were kind enough to give me the scoop. Turns out the share Ishii's reputation really went down the dumps this past year. Is that so? I'll give you the quick summary. They moved here about three years ago. Their previous residence was in a better part of town. Michio's father died in a car accident, leaving behind just the two of them. Michio's mom, Toshiko, now a single mother, relocated here. At first, they got along with their neighbors, many of which were in similar situations, helping and being helped in turn. So far, so good. What happened? Well, as I said, their reputation began to go downhill about a year ago. A man recognized as Toshiko's common-law husband had moved into the household. His name was apparently Kenki, uh, Kankichar, Kankichiro. Kankichiro. Kankichiro? Kankichiro. Kankichiro Iwai. Neighborhood gossip is something else. Somehow everyone knew his name. So, what of this Iwai character? He was apparently a vulgar fellow with a criminal record. He was prone to violent outbursts. The neighbors often heard screams and shouting coming from the house. The neighbors took particular notice of Ch Toshiko's screams, pleading with him to not hit Michio. That's terrible. As if that wasn't unsettling enough, every night the neighbors also began to hear an eerie chanting. Through this, the Shira Ishii's standing in the neighborhoods plummeted rapidly. Toshiko was often seen covered in bruises and wounds. She stopped responding to her neighbors. She, she would just turn the other way when greeted. They kept their storm shutters closed even during the day and effectively shut themselves away from the entire community. That sounds horrible. Why didn't the police step in and do something? Unfortunately, under our current laws, the police aren't allowed to get involved with domestic disputes. That's awful. And then Michio reportedly killed herself. Things only got worse with Iwai, and Toshiko was admitted to the hospital for her physical and mental abuse. Ever since, Iwai hasn't returned home. Many locals expressed sympathy for Michio's circumstances, but just as many were fed up with the Shira Ishis entirely and seemed relieved that things finally quieted down again. It seems that they were still considered outsiders even after three years of living here. I don't understand it. Why would Toshiko have gotten involved with such a brutish good-for-nothing in the first place? I've heard many stories where one partner's personality does a complete turn after entering a relationship. After her first husband's death, Toshiko's financial situation had also taken a turn for the worse. She was determined to send her daughter to a good high school. It's possible she fell victim to sweet promises. Life can be tough, I suppose. You don't seem moved by the story, ma'am. That's fine. People have all kinds of stories. Uh, Hanjo's ace detective. Collect all information on persons of interest. Uh, Kenkichiro Iwai. The common-law husband of Michio Shiraishi's mother, Toshiko Shiraishi. Uh, Kankachiro started coming and going from the Shiraishi household a little over a year ago. It seems he has served some time in prison, but the details are unknown. Um... But the Shiraishi certainly hadn't lucked out with theirs, bringing such a violent man into it. Uh, is that all? The Shiri Ishis were dealt a tough hand. I can't imagine what it was like. Could it be the girl was forced by, the, by her circumstances to take part in the kidnapping? Uh, I guess let's move somewhere else.
The Hiyaku Soap's headquarters are on the other side of the South Ware Gasui Street. Um, can I, like, leave you and let you do your thing? I'm going to go in. I may be a while, so feel free to find somewhere to, f to kill time. Okay, good luck in there. Sorry to keep you waiting. How did it go? I'll fast forward to the conclusion. I met with Nakumi. Takumi. There's no doubt he's the same man I saw last night, but it doesn't seem like he's a curse bearer. Hmm. But that doesn't mean he has no connections to the recent curses. He knew about the seven mysteries. He even guessed we have a cursed stone of our own. Excuse me. I tried to approach Takumi about a fallen item after I ran into him last night. However, you said your name was Richter, correct? I have a favor I'd like to ask of you. I was hoping you would hand over the curse stone in your possession. Curse stone? What are you on about? There's no need to play dumb with me. In fact, there's no time for it. I had all the same reason you did to think you were a curse bearer last night. And your arrival here only confirms it. You are a curse bearer, no? You're right. We lack time. I'll confess, I am a curse bearer. I possess the curse stone of the haunting clappers. I'm glad to hear the truth. Finally, this conversation is worthwhile. It is a dangerous item you hold. Give it to me. My company will take the responsibility to dispose of it. I didn't know the soap business specialized in scrubbing curses clean. It is the prerogative of Miss uh, Yamamori. Is that so? Assuming you've obtained the curse, you understand the power it involves, no? Miss Yamamori possesses supernatural powers akin to those of a god. She also has a deep love for this land, having transformed it from a pile of dirt it once was to the home of our headquarters. She cannot stomach the fact that it's now the site of these curses run rampant. So, you're telling me the Queen of, Hi the Queen of Hihaku is a real-life witch? She wouldn't appreciate being called that, mind you. There's a sorcerer by the name of Suigen Gamiodo who's gallantly working behind the scenes exercising spirits and the like. Go on. That being said, there have already been instances of the dead coming back to life. Do you understand the urgency of this matter? These are curses we're speaking of, tools which are used by wicked beings to possess people. The rite of resurrection is nothing but a fabrication meant to seduce the curse bearers into unspeakable action. If you truly understand what I'm talking about, you must hand over the curse stone at once. Very interesting. With that said, just how many curse stones have you acquired so far? If what you tell me is true, surely the company would have launched a large-scale search by now. We have six. Six? Whoa, I can rest at ease then. And here I thought I was at risk of being cursed. It seems we are on the same page. If that is the case, you should hand over your curse stone immediately. Sorry to disappoint you, but it's not actively in my possession at the moment. Considering its importance, I've been keeping it in hiding. Really, now? Then I'll accompany you while you retrieve it. I'm sorry, but I've got something important to attend to. But I promise I'll return with it later. Very well. Then you won't refuse to provide your address and telephone number, I presume. How prudent of you. I'll oblige. And that's how it went. Hmm. So they aren't after the right at all. I wouldn't be so quick to trust him. Oh? I believe we're dealing with a master in deception. He may well have made up a story to convince us to part ways with our stone. I think he was lying about having procured six curse stones as well. Like, really? Six? That's excessive. Well, now I feel gullible. The company is plotting something. I wonder what they mean to do with the curse stones. He seemed rather desperate to get a hold of ours, despite us not having collected any soul dregs. Perhaps the people at Hihaku are the masterminds behind the curse being unleashed. Because the chairwoman's a witch. I wonder about that, too. If she really was that powerful, would her secretary have divulged that information so casually? Takumi was either making it up as he went, or... Or... Or he's trying to spread a rumor. For what purpose would he do that? Recently, people have been caught up about the occult more than ever before. For it spreads that Hihaku's chairwoman has godlike powers. She could very well benefit socially and politically from that mystique. Hmm. 
That's unsettling. By the way, there's one more thing of interest I heard while in the company's reception lobby. What's that? People were discussing whether one of the bodies found this morning was that of a Hihaku employee. Really? So long as the officials haven't revealed the identity, it all amounts to no more than speculation, though. Despite that, I've reason to believe Hihaku Soaps is deep, deeply involved with the Seven Mysteries. At the very least, I can assure you I've gathered that much. The more we know, the better our negotiations will go. Alright. Do we just go back to the park now? How interesting that the Queen of Hihaku, or the Witch, whatever she is, is trying to get her hands on the right of resurrection. It's like some kind of dark fairy tale. Regardless of what it is, what is n er, regardless of what is or isn't true, we must stay one he one step ahead. Police are probably too wrapped up in solving the case to be concerned about the student's mental health. I can see that. It's important that society provides a safe environment for the benefit of our youth. Some school policies could use some rewriting, especially those handling the student's personal information. That's right, I don't want a student being kidnapped on their way back home ever again. I expect criminals to grow more cunning as time passes. There may be times where the authorities can't keep up. That's where outlaws such as myself come in. What's this about? Ah, actually, just forget I said anything. They're all dressed up for school. In another wor world, I might have had the chance to see my son in uniform, too. <clears throat> I doubt anyone's still living there. Hmm? Oh, so you came here, too. What is it? Ah. Could you repeat what you know once more for one Could you repeat what you know one more time for me, Richter? Uh, hello. Uh, dead or alive, Haraway and Richter visit Michio's home, having determined her to be a key player in the unresolved kidnapping case from a year before. As the complicated story begins to unravel, they encounter two men. Ma'am, allow me to introduce one of our country's most elite detectives. My name's Junerio. I'd hardly call myself elite, but either way, it's nice to meet you. This here is the brilliant Chief Inspector Sutsumi, and yes, he's just as rough and tumble as he looks. Sometimes I really don't know if you're complimenting me or putting me down. So, you two are detectives. This is my client, Miss, uh, Mrs. Harue Shigima. Her father's a big deal in the police himself, so remember to mind your manners. A bigwig named Shigima? Boss, you know of this guy? Shit, I've heard the name, but you know I don't keep track of who's in the, who's who in the upper echelons. There's no need to worry. I am my own person, after all, and my father has nothing to do with any of this. Oh, did you hear that, boss? Looks like you're getting off easy again this time. Don't make it sound like I'm involved in some shady business. It ain't like that. You both seem rather jovial, despite being detectives. How rare. All of the police officers I've met have always been so... Dull. Well, you won't find any dull cops here. We'll round up all your criminals with a smile. That's our motto. How lovely. Keep it up. Just to hold on one second. This is the first I'm hearing of that. Well, you're right about them not being your typical, typical detectives. 
A young and energetic detective, he seems to have a strong sense of justice. If my son had the chance to grow older, perhaps he would have become an officer just like him. Check mark. He seems like he's got a lot of experience working the streets. Most of the officers are I know are the bureaucratic desk jockey types. The contrast is rather striking. What brings you here, Richter? You want a case? That's right. I'm picking up the police's slack. I trust you remember the kidnapping and murder case from last year. Oh, I remember now. You're that Haraway Shigima from the kidnapping case. Huh? Did I miss something? Don't be an idiot. It was the case where M Munasada Shigima's grandson was kidnapped. Which must have been your son, ma'am. Indeed, the story was suppressed by the news. In the end, it was considered a huge failure on the police department's part. Most of the investigation was conducted in secret. And unfortunately, the department is unwilling to reopen the case. Any investigation carried out afterwards turned up nothing at all, which is why I'm now on the job. So they never caught the culprit, huh? That's rough. So, your findings have brought you to this place, then? That's right. An individual connected to the case used to live around here. Used to? That's right. As of last week, they're deceased. We'd hoped to talk to the family. No one was home when I checked last time, so we figured we'd try again. Interesting. It sure doesn't look good on the police to be mishandling cases like these. If there really was a culprit, it should be our responsibility to bring them to justice. Well, I do consider the police my people, so you consider the blame to be shared. You've got a stern side it, I, as well, I see. By the way, ma'am, this might be sudden, but there's something I'd, I'd like to confirm with you. And that is? Do you happen to know anything about the seven mysteries of Hanjo? Sorry, Chief, but that's hardly... With all due respect, Investigator, I think my question was addressed to the lady. Hm. If you insist. What do you say, ma'am? Can you tell us anything? Um... I've heard of the seven mysteries of... Uh, I've heard of the seven mysteries, but this talk of curses eludes me. Is that so? Well, I'm sorry for the intrusion. Come to think of it, I heard some things about this area last night. Something about a strange yet conspicuous man dressed in white loitering around. Wait a second. I assume they were talking about you, investigator. Well, I wouldn't argue that I'm... I won't argue that I'm strange and conspicuously dressed in white. And as it turns out, I was out here last night to conduct my investigation. Did you run into anything stranger out of the ordinary? Out of the ordinary? Hmm... I guess I did observe a few suspicious characters. You were asking about curses just now. Why would a public servant be so interested in the occult? Boss, Richter's a smart man. He can help us if we tell him what we know. I can't promise I'll be a, of any help to you, but I'm interested in hearing what you've got to say. Something hap something's happening in Honjo, isn't there? It must be something big if they've got the head of the office guys. If they've got you head office guys on it. Well, I guess it's all right. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Thank you, boss. Listen closely to what we're about to say, Richter. Huh. So by using the curses to commit murders, these people click soul dregs to perform the rite of res resurrection. And these curse stones are somehow connected to the seven mysteries of Hanjo. It's a tough story to swallow, but I don't see a reason to doubt you either. We figured... We figure the strange occurrences happening around here recently are connected to these curses. To get this situation under control, we've been searching for the curse bearers to confiscate their curse stones. Do you have any information that might help us? Uh, that's tough. I never expected curses and other mumbo jumbo to play into this all. But if we're talking about shady characters, there was this middle-aged fellow I saw on South Warigasui Street. He had an average build. He was anxious, like he was searching for prey. Boss, what do you think? Well, considering the location, it could have been Hideki Araishi. We already got his curse stone. Impressive. You two are working quick. Did you see anything else? Not that I can remember. That's a shame. If you see any characters who look like they might be carrying a curse stone, it'd be a huge help if you let us know. Absolutely. I'll let you know if I find anything. Richter, perhaps you could lend a hand on our case, too. There's a number of people who we can't track. 
And finding missing persons happens to be your specialty, no? I hate to disappoint you, but I'm busy enough with this case. The faith of my clients is what keeps me afloat. I have to prioritize requests in the order they come, uh, in which they come. I see. Well, I can't say that's not fair. What do you need a private investigator for, anyway? The cops should have plenty of bright folk to throw at the, at the job. True, but this isn't an ordinary case we're dealing with here. Huh. By the way, that reminds me. Richter. Yes? You said the person who used to live here died last week. You wouldn't be referring to Michio Shiraishi by any chance. You knew? I thought so. It seems like we're here for the same reason, then. Seriously? Michio was involved with curses and magic? Strictly speaking, the curse part isn't our concern. We're looking into Yoshimi's case. Yoshimi? Oh right, Hajime Yoshimi's. That's right, he died on the job. I'm sure you've heard of it. I heard. It was most unfortunate loss. So there's a connection between Hajime Yoshimi of the Juvenile Division and Michio. Well, hold on. Let's focus on Michio for a second. You think she had something to do with the kidnapping? Hmm. Talk about unforeseen developments. Exchanging information should prove mutually beneficial. I'll tell you what I know, but in turn, I want the full scoop on your findings concerning Michio. Sure, to tell you the truth. What? You believe Michio's ghost is the one who killed Mr. Jono Uchi? So he wasn't just mumbling nonsense? I mean, we haven't fully confirmed anything yet. But the testimonies we've heard and evidence we've found point in that direction. Testimony? You mean from those, uh, psychic high schoolers? Didn't they also say there was a chance Michio hadn't killed herself? Wait, if that's true, then... Did you figure something out? Kenkachiro Iwai. Huh? Kenkachiro Iwai. He'll be the next victim. We have to open the door to the Shiraishi's house. We need to look inside. Hey, what's gotten into you? Boss? I'm sure the landlord would give us the key if we asked. Screw that! You know how long that could take? We can ask for permission later. Uh, Richter? Hey, Richter, calm down. We can't just... Take that, you shitty door. That's how you do it. Richter, get a hold of yourself. I see you're still the same as always. Everyone, come look. Look at this. Huh. Whoa, what's up with this room? Boss, there's a dead body in here. Whoa, could that be M Michio's dad? Nah, he's her stepdad at best, if that. It's gotta be the body of Kenkachiro Iwai. There's no doubt about it, this man's a goner. He's gotten real messed up. Looks like he's been like this for a while. I'd say it happened last night. Ario, did you find Jono Uchi's body in the same state? Now that you mention it. It looked as though Kohei, Kohei Jono Uchi had died from a number of heavy blows. What are you suggesting, investigator? It was Michio Shiraishi. She's alive. She used the power of the curses to get back at the men who ruined her life. That's ridiculous. You're suggesting she actually revived? It's gotta be that. And if she's alive, then... My apologies for interrupting. I know we've just arrived at an interesting plot point. But do you really think a dead girl is going around taking revenge from beyond the grave? Consider this. What if Michio Shiraishi never died? But seeing as you've come this far, I'm sure you already know the truth, don't you? And so, I would have you answer me a question. Where in Hanjo was Michio Shiraishi at uh, the hour of 8 o'clock this morning? At 8 o'clock. Can I see the timeline? No. I want to say it's either the school, the bridge, or the house, but I can't remember what happened at 8 o'clock, so I don't know for sure. I see. So that's what you think. 
Let's take a moment to reconsider what you know and choose again, shall we? Was Michio at the park? No, she couldn't have been at the park. She was at the school. It would help if you showed me, like, the timeline. I would like to see the timeline. Congratulations, you are correct. You got it wrong four times. Well, it's a trivial matter. It may have been easier to reach that conclusion had you considered the cause of death. Let's get back to the story then, shall we? I've taken up enough of your time. What? So you really think Michio Shira Ishii is alive? Just think it through and it all becomes obvious. It tracks, but... Do you really think that girl could have managed all this? First of all, Aerio, go report the stage queue. Understood. I'll get on it right away. I'll start investigating this place. It sure isn't lacking in stuff that needs a looking at. There's a bunch of photos of the same person pasted on the wall over and over. Huh? Whoa, now, hold on. These photos. These are all of Fumichika Nejima. Gross. Really? Come to think of it, he was in the papers a lot back in the day. Oh, there's even more pasted up on the wall over here. These are all cutouts from newspapers and magazines about, Nej about the Nejima murders. I don't get it. Why the weirdo shrine? Let's keep looking around. It's the same man in every picture. Is that Fumichika and Nejima? Wow, this is quite the spectacle. I don't think I'll ever manage to erase this from my mind. Don't worry, Richter. You're quite the spectacle yourself. Do you mean to compare me with the likes of a bizarre criminal? These aren't just cut from publications. They even snapped a number of shots of their own. They must have admired him. Why else would they have collected so many pictures? Whatever the case, it's certain they were obsessed. Nejima's pictures... This drawer is really old, Chief Inspector. Do you mind if I look inside? I mean, in normal cases, only the police would be allowed to touch things, right? Right. Aereo isn't here, so let, let me take a look at it. There's just clothes in here. Not much variety, either. Can't say they were big spenders. Well, I was hoping to find a kind of talisman here, but I guess we're not so lucky. I see. Thank you anyway. Uh, drawers, Nejima's pictures, window. With the window and storm shutter closed, no light gets in here at all. It's pitch black. The neighbors mentioned they started to keep the house shut like this long ago. Look at these pictures. Pictures of Fumichika and Nejima cut out from newspapers and magazines. Whoever put these up was obsessed. I wonder what their intent was. You think the Shira Ishis are somehow connected to the Nejima's case? Perhaps they did this as to not forget a grudge or something. It's crazy to think Nejima might be involved in all this too. Hmm. Do you think he might have got anything to do with the body here? Maybe. The man's already out on, on, on parole. He's a curse bearer with a curse stone now. He announced that from the sundown today he'll be going on a killing spree. Oh dear. There's an emergency service underway as we speak, but no one's yet managed to get a hold of the bastard. So he hasn't changed his ways. That doesn't bode well. To tell you the truth, the lady here isn't completely unconnected to the Nejima murders either. You don't say. That's right, we talked about it last night. Twenty years ago, I found the hand in Sumida River that brought the incident to light. You don't say. You were the kid from back then. You were really brave. You did a great deed. Were you the detective I spoke with? I had no idea. So, you two have met before. Fancy that. I've been worried that Fumichika Nejima might bear resentment towards you, ma'am. Hmm, you might be right. Unfortunately, that asshole is quite the resentful type. Oh dear. That asshole. I wonder who put the idea into his head. And now he's got the one-sided greed, too. He's threatening to massacre the people of Honjo at sundown. Seriously? On top of that, he's been itching to get revenge on me as well. Of all things, the man's gone and threatened to kill my daughter. Damn, that's quite the threat. Certainly, you can't afford to stay put here. The fucker wants to get us all antsy. When I finally get to arresting him, it'll be with a cool head. Not gonna give him the pleasure, huh? Well, if Iwai and Fumichika and Nejima have anything to do with each other, then this room might hold a clue to Nejima's location. 
Let's hope so. The person who put all these photos up must have been obsessed with Nejima. They might have had some relation to Nejima's victims, or perhaps it was the opposite. The opposite? What if it wasn't loathing, but admiration? But then... <laughs> this sliding door leads to the kitchen. It barely fits the frame. There are old books scattered everywhere. I wonder what they were about. Many of them are written in foreign language. It'll be a pain to look through all of these. Let's save them for later and continue to look around. It's off-putting to look at, but I can't help but wonder what in the world this is. They're magic runes. They're magic runes. They're used in Western black magic rituals. Most of the time, they're useless imitators, though. Uh, useless imitations, though. I wouldn't get too excited about it. Oh my. Who knew the chief inspector was such an expert on the occult? I just chanced upon that information. That girl with the spirit since we mentioned, she's pretty informed on the subject. Hmm. Someone was attempting to perform Western black magic in this place. Pretty absurd, if you ask me. Of course, the person in question was dead serious about it all. While magic is often classed as a branch of mysticism, or may variously refer to the likes of witchcraft or astrology, here it refers specifically to Western black magic. In the Middle Ages, the line between science and magic was blurred, with the pursuit of the supernatural considered a legitimate academic discipline. Astrology was regarded akin to astronomy, while alchemy was accepted as scientific fact and would eventually evolve into what is known today as chemistry. One discipline, however, was considered wicked and shunned accordingly. Black magic, the practice of using magical knowledge to strike a bargain with demons. In contrast to the socially acceptable subjects studied uh, by the intelligentsia, black magic was most prolific among the lower classes. It was the common people who suffered from the ills of the day, war, famine, and sickness, which perhaps led them to seek aid from unholy powers. As heresy, these rituals and spells were nowhere to be found in orthodox modes of teaching, but instead were recorded in tomes of dubious credibility. Looks like the things spread out here have been like this for a while now. This ritual, or whatever, was something he attempted up to recently. Plenty of neighbors mentioned having heard strange mantra-like noises coming from here during the night. You think EY was the one chanting? Hard to say. Could have been one of the Shira Ishis as well. If we look through these books in the back, we might learn whatever it is they were trying to do. There's nothing around to confirm his identity, but by, by the looks of him, I'd say he's Kamp Kachira EY. You've seen him before? I heard he had a criminal record, so I assumed he wouldn't have held a respectable occupation. Is this what a curse does to a person? Ma'am, it'd be better not to look so closely. It's amazing. Cruel is what it is. There are candles and stones with inscriptions placed all over. Are these tools for some kind of ritual? Hey, don't touch anything, you hear? Ah, that's right. Considering this a murder scene, we ought to leave everything as it is. All of this can be used as evidence. If anyone besides Forensic toys with it, it'll cause trouble down the road. What do you say, Chief? Would you let me look through it if I wore gloves? Well, it's not like I'm any help with the foreign languages. Go ahead. Thank you. Hmm. This seems to be a book on Western black magic. The same, rooms are, the same runes are written here, alongside detailed description of the procedures. I suppose you'd call these grimoires. It's all a bunch of nonsense, if you ask me, though. You think this Iwa guy was studying them, perhaps to perform some kind of ritual? There are a bunch of handwritten notes besides the grimoires. Whoever it was, they were serious about this. Iwa doesn't look like the type to be into this stuff, but you shouldn't judge a, ju a book by its cover. But why would he be studying black magic? According to the materials, this here rune is for the re restoration of youth. Perhaps he was trying to become young again. This over here seems to be black magic related to resurrection. Each one of these spells requires a human sacrifice. Talk about dangerous. Resurrection? Like the right? I guess no matter what part of the world, people will turn to the occult for similar reasons. Hmm? What is it? This looks like a journal. It was probably EY's. A journal? Hmm. His writing is surprisingly thorough. It's almost as if he was writing a report for someone. Oh wow, now this is something. What is it? What did he write? This is quite the find. Let me give you a summary. So, this Kankachiro Iwai fellow. He'd been searching for a spell to restore youth for years. So he was into black... So he was into black magic from the start. 
He believed if he could learn to successfully perform a spell, he could then use it to earn a fortune. To tell you the truth, it seems he was already getting funded after he acquired this grimoire. You don't say. This is starting to sound kind of familiar. But first, let's find out how he got his hands on this grimoire. It seems that Nijima told him where he could obtain the book when they were both in prison. What? That's nearly too much of a coincidence. Likely not coincidence. It seems like Iwai took an interest in the Nijima murders after it made the news. He admired him rather passionately. You might even say he worshipped the man. Worship? Nejimo of all people? This was a time when students were itching to rebel. Anyone who did something to shake the world was bound to gather admirers. EY had been collecting these photos ever since that time, and since he just so happened to land in prison at the same time as Nejima, he made sure to get in contact. This is a lot. I mean, even having it all laid out like this. The thought of Nejima being involved with these grimoires is staggering. I don't think we ever had anything pointing to that. What's the connection? To be honest, it's a shock to me too. For years we've been scratching our heads over the motives behind the Nejima murders. Yep, it's been a mystery to all of us from the start. Whoa now, wait a minute, do you think? No way, are you saying? That's right, the murders might have been for a ritual. He was attempting to perform black magic. The instructions written down for the sacrificial offering match up exactly with the acts carried out by Nejima. You've got to be kidding me. So that sadistic crap he was doing was all for black magic. That's what the evidence suggests. However, Nejima tried to do the same type of resurre resurrection ritual, but Iwai had different motives. Chief Inspector, you might think this is all the stuff of fantasy, but that doesn't refute that Nejima and Iwai were both acting in earnest. This is batshit insane. You're telling me that Nutjob did this all for some hokey pokey resurrection? Shit, resurrection. That means there must have been someone Nejima wanted to bring back to life. Damn, that's it. That has to be it. Fucking hell, it all makes sense now. What? What is it? So, about the Nejima murders. There's some information that's been kept from the public. Go on. When we broke into his house and arrested him, we also found a baby. A baby? It was a girl, looked to be about six months old, but she was covered in filth. She looked so weak and sickly. We called the medics right away. If we were a second later, I'm sure the girl would have died, Mio. So was Nejima the father. He told us he'd found her under a bridge. He found her? She was abandoned? I've heard of parents threatening to leave their child under a bridge as a threat, but to think it actually happens. Uh, I suppose there's some cases with the dead newborns found stuffed in coin lockers, so it's not without precedent. Whatever the case, we never found out the truth. But there's one rumor, rumor from back then that I could never get out of my mind. And it's starting to sound more likely now. And it's starting to sound more likely now. Well, I'm sure this isn't the first time you've heard of it. Many believe Nejima's guilty of more crimes than what got him convicted. Back then, a lot of girls went missing. Yeah, I remember all of that. Among the high school girls that might have been murdered, or maybe I should say sacrificed, was a girl who was pregnant. Goodness. That's horrific. He killed her and dismembered her body. And we thought maybe the baby we found is what he pulled out from inside of her. Don't misunderstand me. This is all speculation on top of more speculation, you hear? But I for one never believed that man would just take in the baby he found under a bridge. I'm feeling sick. Stay strong, ma'am. I know this is hard to hear. Like I said, don't take that to be the full truth. We were running on speculation back then. Now that this whole resurrection magic has come into play, we should consider the possibility that it was his child, and that maybe he was trying to revive whoever the mother might have been. It's just a theory, but my life would be a tad easier if it were true. That's an interesting thought. If there's anyone Nejima would want to resurrect, a deceased wife is as good as any, I guess. The fact that he obtained a curse stone suggests he has an interest in the right of resurrection. Damn, you're right. And here I was thinking that he was only after the curse's power to massacre. Um, Chief Inspector... Yes. What happened to the child? Without a birth registration on file, best we could do was find the girl some suitable foster parents. It was decided to keep the circumstances secret for the sake of the child's future. Well, I'm glad she was taken care of. Is Mio... Mio is the daughter? Don't mean to derail the conversation, but there's still more written in EY's journal. 
We know Ewai had managed to obtain the grimoire thanks to the advice he got from his idol, Nejima, while in prison. After conducting the research and gathering more information, he determined he had a chance to get rich quick. Right, he thought he could make some money if he could successfully use rejuvenation magic. Correct. Turns out someone get, uh, someone him gave him the idea. Turns out someone him gave him the idea. Uh, take out that first him. And get this. It was the one and only queen and chairwoman of Hihaku Soaps herself, Natsui Yamamori. Wait, the chairwoman of Hihaku Soaps? So that's where this leads. Here, let me read what he wrote. The queen of Hihaku has a strange fear of growing old. Her fear of death is even worse. If she doesn't die, she wishes to be revived. She will spend whatever it takes to preserve her beauty. Magic, rituals, and rites, she'll use whatever means necessary. Her tenacity is unbelievable. She was apparently investi investing money into any research on resurrection, the restoration of youth, and the like. Hmm, so she would even throw her money at the occult. The, place the place's greed will take you. Well then, that brings us to Hideki Araishi. She presumably funded his research into the right of resurrection as well. That's what it all points towards. I wouldn't be surprised if the Witch of Hihaku pounced on the rumors of the right of resurrection. It's starting to sound likely. It might also be why she's spreading the rumor about having godly powers. It's a convenient cover for if she becomes young again. Godly powers? What's that all about? Ah, uh, you can ignore that. Either way, I think EY took the payments he was getting for his research to seduce a family into taking him in to keep a low profile. The Shiraishi family, Michio, and her mother, Toshiko, were just as unlucky marks. And this is where you get involved. Are you feeling steady, ma'am? Huh? This has something to do with me. Are you saying that... No, you can't mean. You've realized, then. Perhaps... Fumachika Nijima's living sacrifice was a child. No. What? Ma'am, please calm down. That wasn't it. Oh, was I mistaken? Then what do you mean? Ma'am, please calm down. Iwai moved in with the Shiraishis to practice his magic. He needed a sacrifice to perform his youth restoration spell, but that means extracting a life force from someone young. That's what I said. Oh, um, Iwai, not Nijima. So is Iwai, this man... Ewai worshipped Nejima, so he must have also despised Nejima's detractors. Not to mention he was captured and sent to jail once before. Surely he had a bone to pick with the police. So when he realized he had the chance to both avenge Nejima, embarrass the police, and acquire a living sacrifice at the same time. Fuck. You got it. Ewai kidnapped Haru Ishigima's son and managed to score three birds with one stone. <sighs> You're telling me then that that horde man, he never had the intention of returning my child. Ah. <sighs> I thought there might have been a reason why the kidnapper seemed to be mocking the police. He never wanted money. His aim was to humiliate the force. It all makes sense. He must have used Michio to lower your boy's defenses and kidnapped him on his way back home. That man, he, he took Suichi. Ah. Ma'am, please calm down. I understand, but you must remember to breathe. You don't understand. You have absolutely no idea what I'm going through. This isn't a joke. I wouldn't expect the police to understand. You'll never understand. Living sacrifices. What a stupid, stupid idea from a stupid little man. Okay, man. Let's take a moment to breathe. Why don't we get, get go get some fresh air? Can't believe this. This is... This is... Ugh. Chief, I think it's best we take our leave. But before we go, there's one more important piece of, inform of information noted in this journal. Oh... Ewai got in contact with Nejima last year after Nejima was re released on parole. He provided him with accommodation and financial support. Is that so? He managed to find a hideout for Nejima to stay in. Damn it! If anything, rather than use his money to support the Shiraishis, it seems most went to Nejima instead. If Nejima's lurking around anywhere in the moment, it's probably in that hideout. Did he write where it is? Unfortunately, no. Not that I can tell. But it seems Michio knew where it was. She never met with Nejima in person, but she was made to go in and clean up, among other things. What good is that information? The girl's already dead. 
Wait, no, she's alive. That's right, Michio Shiraishi is alive. If you can find her and get her to talk, you can get her to spill the beans on his hideout, too. Investigator, I'm asking you. I should be going. The lady's not well. Uh, King Kichiro once made a living by placing advertisements in magazines to tell phony magic items and good luck charms. He held a nostalgic yearning for a post-war era when things and people were simple, and he has nothing but negative things to say about the rapidly development the rapidly developing, ostentatious world of late. Radical in his belief that it would be better to tear down society and start over again, Ken Kachiro was discontent with his life spent poking around society's cesspool to make a few coins. When the Nijima murders were widely reported in the media, it had a great impact on Ken, Ken Kachiro, as he witnessed how a single act by a single man could cause a major rift in society. Perceiving Fumichika Nijima as a great hero, he began collecting every piece of information he could, he could find on the man. Ken Kachiro was later arrested for his illegal business practices, and a chance meeting with Fumichika during his incarceration solidified his idol idolization. He was captivated by Fumichika's talk of black magic, and following his release acquired the grimoire Fumichika had in the way. As for Toshiko Shiraishi, uh, Ken Kachiro set his sights on her after encountering her at, the, at her part-time job. When he learned that the Shiraishi family was in financial trouble and could not afford to send Michio to college, he turned on the charm and took advantage of their weakness by offering them money. He revealed his true colors, however, after moving in with the family, and used violence and money to keep Toshiko and Michio under his thumb. All the while, his belief in black magic deepened, and he found a sponsor in the Hihaku Cor Corporation. Ken Kachiro forced the Shiraishi family to perform various rituals, with any attempts to resist being met with merciless beatings. The mother and daughter were helpless to resist. After Hihaku offered Ken Kachiro great sums to intensify his work with black magic, he set his mind to sacrificing a child in order to perform a youth restoration spell. For this purpose, he chose Shuichi Shikima, a son of Haruhi Shikima, against whom Fumichika held a grudge. He attempted to enlist Michio so as not to alarm the boy, and when she resisted, beat her mother twenty times. With Michio's assistance, Ken Kachiro kidnapped Shuichi and locked him up at the Shuichi house and told the young man to, uh, the young and courageous boy that he killed Michio if he tried to run. While his actions were motivated by a personal grudge against the police, it was first and foremost an attempt to create a societal uproar and break down in public order, so Ken Kachiro painted the crime as a regular kidnapping, demanding a ransom from the family. However, because of an embargo on the press, the kidnapping did not cause a public out outcry akin to that of the Nejima murders. Infuriated, Ken Kachiro had Toshiko uh, Toshiko performed the sacrificial the sacrifice ritual by threatening to kill Michio if she refused. Toshiko killed Shuichi in his sleep, but the spell failed, for which Ken Kichiro blamed her. Warning Michio to keep silent about the murder to avoid incriminating her mother, Ken Kichiro dumped the boy's body in a nearby river. The tiny corpse was found a week later in the Sumida River, after floating through the se several canals in Honjo. Having drifted for days in the polluted waters, little evidence remained. Although Ken Kichiro performed no further sacrifices, his devotion to black magic only increased. Toshiko and Michio spent their days consumed by guilt, forced to continue serving Ken Kichiro until the day they died. Are you feeling better now that we've got some fresh air, ma'am? I'm fine. Suddenly finding out who the kidnapper was really made me lose my wits. We managed to solve the kidnapping case by pure luck here. You're right, but Richter... I... I feel grateful towards Michio. Because she killed the kidnapper? There's that too. But it's for something else. If Michio is the one killing all these people... Then she must have acquired quite a sizable amount by now. Soul drugs, I mean. Hey, Richter? Whether the kidnapper's dead or alive doesn't mean a thing. Revenge won't bring my boy back. And if Nejima is planning to cause a massacre to collect soul drugs, then all the better. I won't give up on resurrection. So, I'm counting on you. The 
The rite of resurrection is the inception of this whole affair. Yako and Mio decide to confront the man responsible for spreading rumors of it in the first place, Hideki Araishi. They find him at his frequent stomping grounds, the Kurokikyo Cafe. You know, normally you'd be breaking school rules just by stepping foot in a cafe. I'll be in uh, hot water if you lied about having permission from the police. Remember that. We know. It'll be okay. So, what did you want to ask me? Uh, we can't check our surroundings or anything, it doesn't look like. Okay, inside. A cafe! I've never been to one before. How exciting. It's pretty smelly inside because of the cigarette smoke, but... Kuro Kikyo Cafe, a, cafe, a coffee shop in South Wari Gasui Street. Kuro Kikyo Cafe's convenient location has made it a favorite of businessmen in the neighborhood. Uh, although the formerly relaxing location where classical and jazz music were played, the cafe has begun incorporating some pop songs into its playlist at their quest of customers. The most popular menu item is pilaf served with black coffee, although cream soda topped with a large scoop of ice cream is also a popular choice. Fashionable cafes featuring jazz and live performances were in vogue until the mid-Showa era, when a number of cafes offering a carefully brewed cup of coffee in a relaxed atmosphere began to increase. Many of these locations also have public telephones, making them convenient meeting places. However, they also developed a reputation as hangout spots for delinquents, leading a large number of schools to forbid their students from patronizing them. In recent years, table arcade games have become a big hit, affording uh, cafes and selling them a steady stream of customers. A kidnapping and murder case that took place in Honjo Sumi, uh, Sumida around one year ago. Harue Shigima's son, Shuichi, age 11, was kidnapped on his way home from school, with a ransom being demanded that same evening. Initially, the kidnapping was thought of as a simple extortion scheme, uh, but when it came to light that the Shigima family was closely tied to the police, and Shuichi was in fact the grandson of a senior official, it was quickly assumed that the perpetrator was acting upon a grudge against the police force. The kidnapping was treated as a direct attack against the good name of the police, and a large-scale investigation was launched that used the best equipment available to trace phone calls. This made it more embarrassing when they were unable to catch the culprit, losing the public confidence. The culprit grew cocky, relentlessly mocking the police, out, uh, the police force. After three days of failure after failure, Harue reached a breaking point. Spurred by concern for her son, she resolved to hand over the ransom money as fast as possible, but her husband and father, who held the prestige of the police in high regard, refused, saying that they would not let the criminal win by giving in to their demands. The increasingly frantic detective assigned to the case lost his temper when the criminal called to give an ultimatum, causing the culprit to never make contact again. Another week passed and Shuichi's body was found floating in the Sumida River. Shuichi's death could be largely ascribed uh, to the police's incompetence, but this was ultimately covered up with the stringent media embargoes. The investigation was never closed, but the case has long gone cold. Subsequent investigations revealed that the culprit was, in fact, Kankachiro Iwai, an un unemployed man. Toshiko Shiraishi, his common law wife, and Michio Shiraishi, their daughter, acted as accomplices. Kankachiro routinely used violence against both Toshiko and Michio to force them to do his bidding, and it is believed that he coerced them into becoming accessories to the crime. Kankachiro wanted to use the boy as a living sacrifice for his magical studies, meaning that the ransom was never actually the primary motive for the kidnapping. The reason for targeting the Shigima family's son was due to a personal grievance. We found a mocking mockingbird. Yako, if you would. Right. We wanted to ask you about this. Oh my, a curse stone. An Okami mask. That must mean the fool's possession. You two were at the school last night. Damn, they're of all places. Yako, you're one of them. You're a curse bearer. Um, uh, please calm down, Mr. Araishi. Your reaction is too intense. It's kind of scaring me. Ahem. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I'm afraid I got ahead of myself. What is it you wanted to know about your curse stone? Hmm. What would be the best way, best way to approach this? It's just a brilliant teacher like you must know an awful lot about these curse stones. Well, it's true that I'm likely the person mo most well-versed in this matter. You're the only one we can count on, Mr. Arishi. Won't you help us, please? Oh, am I now? In that case, there's no ha harm hearing what you have to ask. Thank you. Let's see. 
Why is everything with the Rite of Resurrection and Seven Mysteries Curse Stones happening now? Oh, taken an interest now that you've received one of the curses, have you? You sound like a researcher, starting your questioning with your subject's origins. Uh, Mr. Ar Araishi, you're not the one who triggered the curse, are you? No, I'm afraid I had nothing to do with that. Rather, I wasn't even attempting to do so in the first place. Completing the rite itself has nothing to do with my research. Then, do you know of the ancient Onmyodo ritual known as the Feast of Shadows? What is that? Something from the occult? Miss Kurosuzu, you look like the type to be interested in those things, but it's outside of my field of expertise. Um, in that case, why do you think the rite and the curses have appeared now? I believe this is the intentional work of someone. Hmm, it's certainly not something that would happen by accident. Why is it you want to know? Well, uh... He may not tell us anything else if we say that we're trying to stop the curse. We need to make something up. Right. Well, you see, we just have such intellectual curiosity, and I uh, think it could really help your research. I see, now that you mention it. Seems like he's reluctant to answer. Hmm. And how about... Um, then, what does that record of fates that you've been researching say about the right of resurrection? Oh, I see. That's what you want to know. Allow me to first elucidate you regarding the author of the Record of Fates. A special privilege, I might add, since I have yet to publish this in a paper. Yeah, okay. The Record of Fates was written 200 years ago in the latter half of the Edo period. It was written by a skilled but little-known onmyoji called Simon uh, Suchi Mikado. This is important stuff. If nothing else, remember this. Simon Suchi Mikado. I've never heard of him. I'm sure you haven't. He was born into a famed Onmyoji family, but split away to practice forbidden arts in secret. He used whatever name was most convenient for the situation, so his real name barely exists in records. Or so it is written in the Record of Fates. Huh? As brilliant as Simon was, he was also an eccentric. He delved into the researching the Rite of Resurrection, a legendary forbidden ritual that had never been completed. However, by involving himself with this forbidden ritual, he was expelled from his family, and eventually found himself in Honjo and Ido. The Record of Fates are the writings Simon recorded on the road to Edo. I see. So he wrote about how to perform the rite itself? The Rite of Resurrection makes use of Abe no Simon's specialty, the Taizen Fukun ritual, a means of communicating with the afterlife. It uses soul dregs to replicate the soul of a dead spirit that has been called. Oh wow, I never knew something like that existed. Thus, it is thought that only ones who can use it are those with the ability to turn human souls into soul dregs in the first place. So the Rite of Resurrection calls for that ritual to be performed in advance. Then, when the soul dregs are gathered and infused with the wish of whoever is performing the ritual, it can be completed. The contents written in the Record of Fates in there. There's no more? What about the Seven Mysteries or the Curse Stones? There's nothing written about them in the Record of Fates. The Curse Stones are separate from the Rite of Resurrection. Their curse is one used to enable one who is unable to... Their curse is one used to enable one who is unable to perform such rituals to be able to use the right. Huh, that's similar to what Mio said, actually. Uh, according to the Record of Fates, this mysterious ritual was devised by the gifted Onmyoji Abe no Simon, Saime. Uh, it converts the souls of the dead bound for the underworld with soul dregs collected as sacrifices through the Taizan Fukun ritual. This secret art of converting souls to soul dregs is out of the reach of all, uh, to all but the most skilled practitioners. Anmyoji, uh, Anmyoji, an officially appointed government position with the Bureau of Anmyo in medieval Japan. Anmyoji were tasked with performing divinations and rituals. They would employ the Chinese philosophies of yin and yang and wuxing, the five elements, to compose astronomical charts and almanacs. High-ranking practitioners used a variety of mystical arts, including ones that brought natural disasters and curses. Anmyoji are or are also tasked with exercising demons through the usage of shikigami. Uh, Anmyoji thrived during the Heian period, in part due to the work of the famous Anmyoji and later founder of the Shichi uh, Mikado clan, Abe no Saime. However, Anmyoji began to gradually decline in number after a samurai gained control of Japan. At the same time, many of their miraculous arts were lost along the, with the development of civilization. Although the services of Anmyoji were typically reserved for the upper class, there were a number of Shomonji, or hidden Anmyoji, who worked for the common folk. And there's the mockingbird we found. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Arishi. What is it, Mrs. Uh, Miss Kurazuzu? You published a theory before the incident took place. It said the right of resurrection and origin of the seven mysteries of Hanjo are related somehow. What proof did you have of that? 
you really know your stuff, but about that. That was what somewhat sensationalized piece written for occult magazines. Oh, really? It was just nonsense then? Not exactly. Rather, it's not a complete fabrication. There is a basis for it. And that is? Well, I suppose there's no harm in telling a couple students so passionate about this topic. Thank you. This is something I discovered from referencing numerous texts unrelated to the Record of Fates. It was just after Simon arrived in Hanjo. There are records of a conflict over a ritual used to resurrect the dead in Hanjo. Conflict over resurrecting the dead? I don't know the details. A man enticed the public with claims of a spell that could resurrect the dead, causing a conflict that ended tragically with nine dead. That is the only remaining reference. Nine people fighting over a resurrection ritual. I call this tragedy the Honjo Incident, and it has long been a subject of my research. And I suspect that this Honjo Incident might be the very origin of the seven mysteries of Honjo. So what you're saying is, the resurrection ritual at the root of the Honjo Incident is Simon's rite of resurrection. Yes, that is how the Record of Fates ties everything together. To put it in chronological order, first, Simon brought the Rite of Resurrection to Edo. We can assume that by this point, Simon was uh, likely using a different name. Then, in Hanjo, nine people fought to the death over this rite, the Hanjo Incident. After that, the incident was covered up by an interested party, preventing it from being recorded in history fully. Eventually, it was passed down in incomplete pieces, becoming known as the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. That's more or less the course of events. During the Edo period, a chain of events that occurred around a certain resurrection spell became the basis for the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. So that's how they're connected. Then if I'm getting this right, the Seven Mysteries are basically required to gather the soul dregs necessary for the rite. <laughs> and there's more. With this most recent occurrence of the curse, I've become even more confident in my theory. You are? Yes, the reason for it being the resentful memories of the seven mysteries etched into those who received the curse stones. Resentful memories. Yako, if you really are a curse bearer, then when you obtained your curse stone, you would have had a resentful memory imprinted in your mind. Oh, I did. Exactly. Those memories are what happened in the final moments of the nine who died in the Hanjo incident. Broadly speaking, they involved dying while bearing some kind of deep resentment. The nine victims became the nine curse echoes, which over time came to, uh, came to be spoken of as the seven mysteries. Thus, gathering the resentful memories granted by the present curses and connecting them together, it will reveal once and for all what happened during the Hanjo incident. Huh. That's why you must tell me about the resentful memory of your fool's possession, Yoko. Urgh. Mio, should I? Yeah, I think it's okay. We, know, we, need, we need all the information we can get. Okay, Mr. Arishi, I'll tell you about the memory of the Fool's Procession. Excellent. So basically, it's about a woman who died falling from a Yogura Tower at a festival. Hmm, interesting. It's not that one, then. Not that one? What do you mean? Among the nine victims at the Honjo incident, that is to say the nine curse echoes. One of them is Simon himself, or so I suspect. Huh, Simon was one of the victims at the Honjo incident, too? Meaning, an Onmyoji as powerful as him also became a curse echo. Right. It would make sense that the curse stone tied to a curse echo like that would be special. The power of a curse stone is different. Uh, the power of a curse stone is different based on a curse echo. Mio, Mio, Mio. Then maybe the Simon's curse echo we could. Yes, we may be able to settle this whole situation. Hey, what are you two whispering about? Oh, nothing. Sorry. Mr. Arishi, how many of those resentful memories have you gathered so far? I have learned a number of them. The Evergreen Beach, the Foot Washing Mansion, the Ever Burning Lantern, and now the Fool's Procession make four. Of those, the most important are the Foot Washing Mansion and the Evergreen Beach. What are they about? First, the Foot Washing Mansion. An army OG appears distinctly in this one. Really? But not Simon, I'm afraid. A female army OG who sought the right of resurrection due to her obsession with her personal appearance. Her legs, which she had always taken pride in, were stricken with corruption after she was defeated by Simon. Her curse echo is notable for being particularly easy to fulfill the requirements necessary to use the curse. That detective did well to escape this one. So a female on Miyoji and a rival Simon was involved on the Hanjo incident. That certainly is interesting. Next, the Evergreen Beach. The curse echo is from a craftsman of Natsuke carvings named Junkichi, who was hanged for spreading baseless rumors. He apparently spoke of something that granted the ability to bring back the dead. The Rite of Resurrection. 
Precisely. The man, this man, Jinkichi, must have been in contact with Simon. If I could just collect all of those memories, everything will be revealed, and the truth of the seven mysteries will be mine. That is the knowledge I desire. Meaning you need to gather as much information as you can from the curse bearers. Precisely. I have an agreement to exchange information with those detectives, but they might not even find the other curse bearers, so I must take measures of my own. Another thing. Yes? You never really finished about what the trigger for all this was. Well, um, I don't know. Really? You're not hiding something from us, are you? It has something to do with how you obtained the Record of Fates, right? How did you really get a hold of the Record of Fates? To tell you the truth, we're in a race against time. It could be a disaster if we don't hurry. What are you talking about? Someone left a warning that at sundown today they would use the curse to kill a lot of people. The one who left that message is the culprit behind the Nejiman murders from 20 years ago. What? Something so terrible will happen? I won't allow potentially hundreds of people to become victims of a curse. I'll do anything in my power to stop it. Mr. Arishi, please tell us everything you know. I'm sorry, but I truly don't know anything. The truth is, I was given the record of fates by a woman. A woman? Well, her voice sounded like a woman's, but I didn't actually see what she looked like. One month ago, while I was investigating at night, I suddenly heard a formless voice. A woman's voice? It said, I entrust you with this ancient manuscript and the rites of resurrection held within its pages. Spread rumors of this ritual as far and wide as you can in the coming month. And before I knew it, an old document had fallen down at my feet. One month, she specified the time period. I was told if I did that, I could study the manuscript as much as I pleased. I wanted so badly to verify its authenticity, I ended up accepting. I haven't heard anything from the voice since then. Must have had you spread rumors in order to strengthen the power of the curse, to tie together the curse and the desire to seek out the right. This makes it likely that, likely that the owner of the voice is the mastermind behind all of this. Hence, I went public with the record of fates. Hihaku in the occult magazine immediately jumped at the news. Immediately jumping at the news was a financial boon for me. Ah, uh, Hihaku? As in Hihaku soaps? Right, I mean, no, that's not important. Just some personal business. After that, I waited, trying to predict what would occur in a month's time. That's when the curse began. Those are all the details I have. Very well. I've told you this much. I may, as tell, I may as well give you one more thing. Thank you. What might that be? About Simon's Record of Fates. There is a sort of continuation to it. Another document called the Record of Fates Yin Scroll. A continuation? Actually, a section written in Simon's own hand was appended to the manuscript. According to which, after the Hanjo incident, Simon lamented such a calamity taking place. He apparently wrote the addendum for the event that the tragedy became its own curse. He apparently wrote the addendum for the event that the tragedy became its own curse. It seems he had an idea that the victims of the Honjo incident would turn into a curse echoes and be used to gather soul dregs. It supposedly details how to handle any trouble that occurs as a result of the right of resurrection. Really? Hold on a second. Don't you find that strange? What's the matter, Miss, Miss Sakazaki? You think my information is accurate? If Simon died in the Hyatt Honjo incident, then he couldn't have written an addendum. You really don't get it, do you? Huh? Am I wrong? Have you forgotten the ability Simon possessed? Of course not. He could use the right of resu- Oh. You're telling me Simon used it on himself? The right of resurrection can be carried out in advance so that it activates when the soul dregs are gathered together. Then, is it not possible that Simon himself was resurrected by the right after it all took place? But he'd still have to collect the soul dregs needed to use the right. Yes, and that's why they died. They ate others besides Simon. What? They died in the Hanjo incident for their soul dregs? That sounds like it's the same as what's happening now. That's why I need the resentful memories to learn the truth. I get it now. The issue at hand is that the Inn Scroll and the Record of Fates were supposed to have been passed down as a set. When I received the Record of Fates, the Inn Scroll was gone. Only this information was left. Supposedly, Simon's blood descendants guarded it as they passed it down across generations. It seems that over a long his it seems that over their long history, the two documents became separated and the scroll's location lost as the family line branched. Simon had descendants, so there's someone out there related to him by blood even now. Yes, in fact, I've tried to trace the line as far as I could. He wasn't a well-known Onmyoji to begin with, so a detailed family tree does not exist. It seems likely that the use of the manuscripts has been long forgotten, only being passed down out of tradition. And since they aren't even aware of what they have, tracking it down is quite, quite tricky indeed. 
I wish I could ask whoever that voice belonged to about the end scroll. I'm sure you do. So basically, in the record of fate's end scroll, Simon himself wrote about ways to handle the curse and the right, yes? Yes, that's right. I've been searching for it all this time, but haven't found a single lead. So if you two find out anything about other Risenful Memories or Yen Scroll, tell me immediately. You owe me that much for telling you all of this, do you not? That's the real extent of everything I know. An old manuscript from the Edo period. Uh, the manuscript was written by Simon uh, Suchi Mikado, an Amyoji from the Edo period. He was an extraordinarily adept pr practitioner, but after being banished from his family for researching forbidden arts, he changed his name and moved to Edo. It is said that Simon Suchi Mikado, author of The Record of Fates, wrote the Yin Scroll because he feared that the descendants of those involved in the Hanjo incident might become cursed and used in the collection of soul dregs for the Rite of Resurrection. The existence of the Yin Scroll was indicated in a postscript added to The Record of Fates, but its whereabouts are currently unknown. It is believed to have been inherited by a descendant of Simon. Yes, I understand. Thank you for your help. If you bring me some useful information, I'll take it into consideration for your school grades as well. Haha. <laughs> Yako Sakazaki, 1 p.m. We've learned a lot. So to sum it up, there was a tragic incident with people cursing each other for the Rite of Resurrection in the Edo period as well. And the Record of Fate's Yin Scroll may have info we want, since it details how to stop the Rite. I think that's about it. Right. If we could just find the Yin Scroll, we might be able to learn how to settle the situation. But even Mr. Arishi didn't have any leads on where it is. How do we start looking for it? Someone involved in this now must have some connection to it, I think. I have a feeling the Mastermind who awakened the curses is involved as well. Right. So, Mio, what are we going to do next? Good question. It may be best to give the information we just learned to Inspector Satsumi. We got a pretty big clue from hearing about the Record of Fates in school. Mr. Satsumi might know more about it. Should we go back to school then? Yeah, that's our point of contact after all. Whoever's behind that voice that gave Mr. Arishi the Record of Fates, that must be the mastermind, don't you think? Yeah, and he said it sounded like it belonged to a woman. Whoever it is, I bet they're scary. Huh? You don't sound like the Yaku I know. Then let's catch him and make him spill the beans. I thought you'd say something like that. Really? I guess I'm just not really feeling that confident right now. I understand. I don't know if it's related to that one behind the voice, but I'm also interested in the female Amiyoji who is the rival of Simon. Oh, that reminds me, Mio. You know what's nearby here, don't you? Hmm? Oh, you mean where Michio? Yeah, where it happened. I was going there every day to leave flowers, even though they always got cleared away anyways. I'm sure it must be uh, I'm sure it must be hard to have to be reminded of Michio's death all the time. Oh, that reminds me, Yako. Yeah? When you asked me to do the spirit board two days ago, did you come here that day too? Yeah, I left some flowers before going to school. Why? Did anything seem different that day? What's this all of a sudden? Though, now that you mention it, that day I suddenly felt lightheaded and ended up passing out for a little bit. But I came to right away and felt fine, so I didn't think anything of it. I see. That's all I was wondering about. Thanks. Hmm. Excuse me, you girls over there. Whoa. Sorry, I didn't mean to eavesdrop, but something you said caught my attention. Um, and who might you be? I'm Yutaro Namigaki. Er, I should probably tell you. Until yesterday, I was a curse bearer. That should clear things up. A curse bearer? Oh, you don't need to be scared. I've already given up the curse stone on, of the foot washing mansion. The foot washing mansion? So you're the one that Inspector Satsumi was talking about. Ah, you already know Inspector Satsumi. That makes it simple. There's nothing to worry about. Oh, hey. You're in the driver's seat. Yako? Yes. Wait, what? Just now I was... Was I doing something? So they murdered Michio. Chico. Uh, sorry, Mr. Namagaki. What might the, be the matter? Right, I actually wanted to discuss something with you two. Would you come with me if you have a little time? Discuss something with us? You were talking about Michio Shiraishi, right? 
it's related to that. Huh? I'm sure you would learn a few things yourselves. If not now, later is fine. I'll be waiting around Ryogoku Bridge. Something wrongs me the wrong way about this, but he mentioned Michio. What do we do? Sorry, but there's something we gotta take care of. We'll have to pass. Is that so? Well, that's too bad. I'm in no rush, so I'll be waiting at the Rio Goku Bridge if you change your minds. Uh, so I think that... I think that that locked one is probably for... Um, the continuation with them. Um, I want to check something real quick. Persons of interest. So Yutaro and Ayami hit... Michio with their van and then Michio possessed Yako alright um, I'm going to cut the video there uh, so my understanding of events it would help if there weren't so many stories going on um, but uh, Yoko and Shogo were in the park um Yoko has something to do with this because she wants to bring her dog back. We assume that she's telling the truth. Um, it's weird that she hasn't come back yet because all of the other stories are crisscrossing now. Uh, Harue, there's something wrong with her. She is looking for revenge. She has a fascination with death. Uh, she wants to bring her son back. Uh, son was murdered. Uh, Richter Kai is a private investigator. He knows that something's going on with Haraway, but he's still working with her. Uh, he helped Haraway kill um, Shogo in the prologue, in the alternate timeline. Uh, Tetsuo Satsumi, uh, he is a cop. He's investigating all of the, the different things. He knows about the paranormal. Um, Jun Aryo, uh, he... Uh, now knows about the paranormal. He's always been fascinated with it, which leads me to believe that he might have something to do with uh, the Nejima, uh, like, uh, ritual or something. Uh, but as far as we can tell, he's on the up and up. Uh, Hajime Yoshimi, uh, he was trying to protect the girls. Uh, Mayu Chozawa was his fiance. Uh, Yako is possessed by Michio. Mio is the daughter of Nejima, possibly. Um, Michio was murdered, but she's possessed Yako. Uh, there was the scene... There was a scene when we first met Yako where she was with the spirit board and she was like, uh, am I me or are you you or something like that? And it said no. Um, so that might be because she has like two spirits in her currently. Uh, Hitomi... Um, is rebellious, but uh, also seems to be like a decent person. She doesn't seem to be doing anything with uh, the ritual or anything. Uh, Jono Uchi, uh, he was an asshole and he got what was coming to him. Uh, Makoto Ashimaya is actually Nejima. Uh, Hideki Araishi uh, is a little bit full of himself, but doesn't seem to be too far into it. Uh, King Kachiro Iwai was also an asshole. He is dead now. He got what what is coming to him. Uh, Yutaro Namagaki is also an asshole. Uh, he is plotting something. Ayami Tomo Tono is planning something against Yutaro. Uh, Takumi Yum Yumi Oka. Um, I'm not sure that he has anything to do with the murders, but I think that he's definitely involved in like spreading the rumors about the chairwoman and about the occult uh, because as we know from the prologue uh, belief makes people more susceptible to the occult uh, Natsue Yamamori may or may not be an ancient uh, on Myoji uh, Nejima is uh, Hide is uh, what's his name? Eshimaya. Um and then the storyteller is possibly uh, Simon all right, so that's all I've got for now. I'm going to cut the recording there. I will be back in the next video. Thank you all for joining me for another night of Strange Scary Games. I love you all. We'll see you in the next video. Good night.